Hello and welcome back to the commentary of Realton Cup. Today we are playing round seven of uh, of the tournament, so uh, only a few rounds left. Yes, we're looking forward to some uh, highly interesting games today. Yeah, and really nice to have you here once again, Grandmaster Ralph Ockerson. Yeah, it's a pleasure. Uh, I like it a lot to be here. That's mm -hmm. good. That's good. So, um, as we said before, these past these last three games will probably be the decisive ones, yes. and um, will be very interesting for us to follow. Yeah, uh, three rounds uh, left now, uh, and uh, it's a saying: uh, when the times get tough, the tough get going, or something yeah. like <laughs> that. So uh, now uh, we we may see that uh, the favourites, uh, if they really want to achieve something, then uh, they have to show it indeed so let's start with the games then um very shortly <laughs> yeah so we can see that right now uh, before we start looking at the games we have three players with five points and those are arseni nesterov elshan moradiabari and uh, fred urkidal yes so uh, those are the three players with five points and then we have a uh, quiet an amount of players with four and a half points. Yeah, so uh, there are still plenty of players with a chance to win the tournament. Yes, of course. Half a point is not that much, so it's still very interesting in all, in all, in many of the live boards. I mean, in in all the top boards, it'll be very interesting to to see how um, how it gets decided. Yes, <coughs> indeed. So. Yeah, now we have the board. So let's start with board number one. Yes, of course. Yeah. That seems logical. To go in a chronological order. So let's go from the beginning. They've only played seven moves. But let's see what has been happening here between Arseni Nesterov and Elshan Moradiabadi. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it after d5, it will be a queen's gambit. Knight c3, dc, yes, yes, and now uh, white aims for a gambit. Uh, the normal move here is bishop g5, and uh, and uh, then white uh, eventually gets uh, the pawn back on c4, and uh, it will be quite. Uh, uh quite a uh, double-edged uh, complicated position normally yeah okay but white actually decided to sacrifice a pawn here and uh, that's uh, highly interesting this e4 pawn yes. right here yes knight takes e4 and castles and yes, I'm not so familiar with this line, I have to admit. Uh, it seems that black can take a second pawn now if he wants to. But then the C -throp, he, yes, C pawn. But then he will be he will be seriously behind in development. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, this is a theoretical position of course. Uh, and uh, uh, well, if he takes it, uh, let's say knight takes, knight takes e3, bc, bishop takes, uh, then rook b1, I suppose, and um, black must lose time with his bishop, and white will get a strong uh, initiative, I suppose. So okay, th that is uh, certainly dangerous for black. Okay. No, yeah, um, black didn't go for this, but then taking the first pawn is correct. To yeah, take it seems uh, logical to take it wha when white uh, offers the pawn. Yeah. So let's see. And there he went back. He went back instead of taking the pawn on c3, he played knight f6. So this um, 
looks like a normal position uh, except that uh, white is a pawn down. Let's imagine that white would have had a pawn on e3, then it could be um, a position um, more or less like in uh, the, the Nimsu Indian or, or something like that. Yeah. Now this bishop is more free though. Yes. Uh, than if the pawn was on e3, so. Uh, Yes, why can, can play bishop g5 for sure, or maybe there are other alternatives. Let's see what white played. White played queen a4 here, mm -hmm. um, forcing the knight c6. Yes. It's the right. only way to defend the b4 bishop. Mm -hmm. So knight c6 and knight e5. Yes. When black has to play knight c6, it is often a bit uh clumsy but uh, there was no choice here and um, now it uh, threatens of course to take on c6 and afterwards on b4 so black has to do something to protect his piece exactly so for instance if he would have played something like bishop d7 then we could take on c6 uh, yes i i suppose as so. the queen is Okay, then the bishop is also pinning the queen. Yes. Well, uh, he played a5. Yeah, he played uh, a5. Looks. Maybe he could have played something like uh, bishop d6. Uh, it is the same, more or, more or less. Yeah. But now it seems that the white will get the pawn back if it wants to. Yeah, that's his own c6. Yes. Yes, I, uh, I'm sorry. I, I'm a bit uh, unfamiliar with this line. It's a very complicated line, uh, and uh, and of course, if you play it uh, with white in particular, then you really should have uh, some uh, detailed uh, preparations. Yeah, of course. Uh, as with many variations, where you sacrifice a pawn or yeah, the yes. opening. Yes, you should know what you're doing. Of course, y you you don't uh, want to give uh, away a central pawn uh, without uh, having an idea about uh, what to do. Later Absolutely. On. So, but do you think that knight takes c6 is what white should do, or should white somehow try to keep the initiative instead of getting the instead of going for the pawn immediately? Um, I'm thinking with. It seems logical to yeah. take, yeah, I think. I was thinking of something like bishop b5. Yes. But. Then bishop d7, or uh, let's see here, maybe, maybe black simply castles. Uh, bishop b5. I was thinking that if this, then it becomes almost like a better variation, so that after queen takes c6, there isn't this bishop d7. Yes, but on the other hand, black does not have to take immediately, let's say, bish knight takes c6 here. Yeah. Uh, pawn takes. Can we, can we take with the bishop instead, so that we force it more? Yes, but uh, then uh, there will be pin afterwards. Uh, Black takes w with the pawn and plays uh, queen c8. Okay, and maybe that's just dangerous. Okay. So if something like this. Yes, and now it's possible for Black uh, simply to castle. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. hmm. So now the pawns are equal. Uh, both players have. Um, uh, isolated pawns, uh, which are a bit weak, d4 and c7, and I guess the position is uh, roughly equal here. Okay, so let's see, a5 was the last move mm. played, so we will see so if... So maybe he's uh, already a bit uh, outside of his uh, preparation here. White. Mm. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, if he knew exactly what to do, he would uh, do it uh, quickly, I suppose. Yeah, 
and he's been thinking a little bit now. Mm. So he always seems like it's Black who has a lot of. Yes. Who's been playing very very quickly as he has one hour and thirty three minutes. Mm. Okay. Clock right maybe now. we switch to the next game. Yeah, let's go to game number two between Frodo Urquidal and Nikita Meshkovs. Yes. And, and uh, uh, yeah, Urquidal yesterday he he made it to a draw against uh, Volkov. And I think he was in big trouble in a rook ending in that game. Hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't have time or energy to uh, go into detail into that uh, rook ending. Uh, but uh, I'm sure that Ur Urkedal uh, was uh, pleased to get half a point from it. Yeah. And Which placed him with five points. Yes. So now he's uh, sharing the lead. And... Uh, he has white today and uh, yes, probably has ambitions to try to win. So b6, uh, that's uh, the queen's Indian defense. Yeah. And uh, g3 is perhaps uh, the main line and a very solid line. Mm. White fianchetto sees bishop. Yeah. Bishop b4, yes. Yes. Maybe the the main move is bishop b7, but uh, of course bishop b4 makes sense also. And is it simply to develop a piece uh, with a tempo that black wants to do this? Or why does black want to play bishop b4 and... Well, now he exchanged the black yes. square bishop. Well, it could be that he's a bit afraid of uh, a gambit in the main line. I mean, if he plays bishop e7 instead, then white has D5? the interesting possibility yeah. of d5. Alpha Zero played this. Yes, right, I know. In game, yeah. I, it's very sharp and uh, hmm. not so easy for black to handle. Yeah, with the idea of if, well, takes a knight h4. Yes. Yes. And trying to gain some yes. of the f5 the white uh, sacrifices a pawn, but to get a long, uh, very long lasting initiative as compensation. Yeah. So um, quite unpleasant for black. Yeah, very interesting, this d5 mm -hmm. idea. Yes. Um, but many times in this type of positions, we can see that white tries, tries to take use of this diagonal. Right, sometimes like after d5, for example as this bishop will always be defended by the king, mm -hmm. but this bishop is not, the bishop on b7 is not defended, no. typically, by any piece. Or, or uh, let's see here, maybe the normal way to play it is out of the bishop b7, castles, castles, and then a d5. Yeah, maybe like it is. Like that, like that. But, uh, okay, in the game he played the uh, bishop e4, which uh, gives an exchange of bishops. Yeah. And then... Um, Taken with the queen because he wants to place his knight on c3. Yeah, the, the knight will be more active on c3. So uh, taking with the queen is uh, a normal move here. Yeah. Castles, knight c3, knight e4. Yes. Black takes the opportunity to exchange a second pair of pieces. And, um, uh, well, with uh, some exchanges, uh, it makes his defense easier, perhaps. But, um, but probably white is considered to have a small advantage in such positions. Black is still a little behind in development and uh, he needs to do something with this uh, b8 knight. Yeah. So I took on e4. Mm -hmm. Bishop takes and castle. Yes. Here. So uh, it's rather typical for the opening that uh, black has a grip on e4. And, uh, and uh, what often tries to fight for that uh, square in one way or the other. Hmm. And how does white typically do so? 
Um, well, if he just moves uh, the knight somewhere, th then black can exchange bishops uh, uh, one further exchange, which is satisfactory for black, I think. But uh, there are some tougher lines where white uh, usually moves his bishop perhaps to h3 hmm. uh, and then uh, place a knight move. And then f3? Yes, uh, he, he can play knight move to, to get the bishop away. Yeah, so let's just say whatever and then f3 perhaps. Yes, yes. Or he can also play d5 followed by knight d4. Oh, okay. That's... Uh, After bishop h3? Um, or with the bishop on g2? Uh, maybe maybe with the bishop on h3 in order to avoid exchanges. Of course, then black has... If white plays bishop h3, black always has the chance to take on f3, giving white a double pawn. Yeah. But then normally the bishop is uh, slightly superior to the knight, to the black knight. Someone is asking if white could play queen f4 here and play e4 after. Yes, queen f4 is a logical move also. And uh, uh, let's see here. Okay, right now it's blacks. It's I don't know, let's say if black would play d6 or something. Yes. Then queen f4. Yes. That's a logical move for sure. And uh, let's see here. Okay, why black play f5 or is that not a move that black wants to play? Black often wants to keep the square e4 if possible. And um, let's see, can you play f5 here? Because as... as um, as they said in the comments, if the bishop moves somewhere, then e4. Yes, th that seems uh, good for white, uh, yeah. who will get uh, a nice center. But f5, uh, let's see here. Uh, I wonder <coughs> if there are any problems connected with that move. Uh, let's see, f5. If knight e5, then black takes on g2, and that is all right for black, I suppose. Yes. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah, sometimes white also has the possibility to play rook f e1 followed by bishop f1 to avoid the, the exchange of bishops and then possibly knight knight uh, d2 or something something like this yes perhaps yes I it's um, it's possible uh, I i'm not sure exactly how to evaluate the position but uh, Certainly, black wants to keep the the e4 square if possible. Yeah, Th that's m more or less uh, the, the the main idea with the whole opening uh, to mm. to, um, to fight for the e4 square. Yeah, then you don't want to lose it that easily. No, no. But very good question is queen f4 and e4. Yes, definitely. So yes, good uh, question. And um, yeah, it's. Um, it's uh, not that easy to say where uh, the white queen should uh, be heading. No, but uh, f5 is perhaps the way for black to stop e4 from being played, unless there are some, unless there are clear consequences with f5. Yeah, yes, <coughs> f5 is uh, r a rather normal move uh, for black, uh, unless there are consequences. Yeah. For instance, if a white the white queen would be in on e3 here, then knight g5 would be strong, I suppose. 
but on the other hand, if white would have played queen e3 on the previous move, yeah. then black could have uh, returned with this bishop, I think. Yeah, because then e4 could mm -hmm. play. But black played f5 in this position. Okay. After castle. Yes. Okay. So he didn't have to wait for queen f4, no, he no. just played it. Interesting. Immediately. So he he um, delays uh, the um, the question about how to develop the knight. Mm. I think the most normal uh, way to do it is uh, d6 and knight e7. But uh, in some cases, it could be preferable to play knight c6. So it depends. Yes. But typically, this is what we see in this sort of. Yes opening so yeah what well, could play d5 here perhaps uh, yeah d5 and uh, knight d4 actually what did he play let's see because he played a move no he no he played rook a d1 yes preparing maybe d5 yeah that, that seems like a, a logical uh, preparatory move uh, the rook is often useful uh, in the center and where does this rook go then? Does it stay here? Does it go to e1 to play bishop f1? Yes. If possible, the, the white plan would be to play e4 later on. Or maybe, as I said, d5 at some point. And um, yeah, then. Um, well, the most aggressive way would be to do it uh, without allowing an exchange of bishops. But uh, that could be a bit uh, difficult to achieve. Yeah, because it would take several moves to... Yes. I mean... Yeah, also because this knight cannot go to d2 right now to further... Mm. Um, to further protect the e4 square. Yes. So it would take some time to to move all the pieces around in such way that e4 could be possible to be played. Mm. Okay. So. Well, n normally w white can count on a small advantage in such positions. Yeah. B but uh, probably a, a long um, a long game is required, uh, really, to 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 make something decisive out of it. Let's see if it happens like yesterday, that next time we <laughs> get to these games, <laughs> after we've said that it's going to be a long game, yeah, yeah. suddenly it's very sharp and we see all the pieces. Yeah, sometimes uh, yeah. my predictions are completely wrong. <laughs> yeah, so. no, no, it's just, it's fun when they're wrong. <laughs> yeah, th that's uh, w one of the g uh, good things about chess. Yeah, you never know what's going to happen. Mm. Should we go to board number three yes. a little bit? Let's see what's happening here between... Uh, Luis Ernesto Quesada Perez and Dimitri Collars. Uh huh. So, seven moves have been played. Let's go from move number one. Yes. D4, knight f6, c4, e6. It's a Nimso Indian. A Nimso Indian defense, yes. Oh, it's queen c2. Okay. Yes. Yeah, it's a rather um, topical move uh, when white wants uh, to avoid uh, the double pawns on the on c2. Uh, on c3. Yeah. So he's always prepared to take back with the queen on c3. Yeah. D5. Mm -hmm. And here there are several moves, right? Yes. Uh, of course, the black already had a big uh, choice. Yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. On the fourth move. Yeah, yeah, of course. B but uh, even after d5, there are. Uh, there are. Uh, uh, there is a choice. I hear there are many variations. What well, black can play? C5, C yeah, C6, C5. castle. B6 is maybe less uh, common because then white uh, may play E4 directly. But yeah, but there are many choices yes. for black. To, to castle is uh, perhaps the most uh, normal move. Yeah. Okay, but D5. Yes. And okay, now there is also this. Take take bishop g5 or yes variation right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I I've played I normally play queen c2 with white mm -hmm. and then or I've played it a few times so. Uh, but but yeah but there is this 
variation here, right? Yeah, yes. That white can play. White can take on d5 or white can play a3. And th yeah. That's uh, the two most uh, typical moves. Yeah, and a3 was played in the game. Mm -hmm. So, bishop, oops, bishop takes c3. Yes. Queen takes c3. Yeah. Then white wants to take, of course, with the queen on c4. B6. Yes. So this is uh, so theoretical. Yeah, when black plays b6, he usually wants to uh, to play bishop b7, but in this uh, particular situation, uh, the move bishop a6 is actually possible in yeah. uh, in many situations. Very normal for black to mm. play bishop a6. Is it bishop g5 that white normally plays now, or is it knight f3? Uh, yes, both of those moves have uh, been played, uh, I think, and uh, probably some others. Yes. Is white really this low on time right now? Is this is he thinking here? Yes. Seems to be quite low in time for the seventh move. Oh, yes, already used half an hour more or less. Yes, especially because this is quite theoretical. Yes, indeed. This line. It's a bit strange. Maybe uh, somehow he was uh, surprised by the opening of his opponent. Yeah, maybe he wasn't expecting d5 in the Nimsu, or maybe he wasn't expecting the Nimsu at all. No, tha that is possible. Yeah. Okay. So he's thinking. Okay, uh, yeah, t too early to give any predictions. About no, yeah. This game. Of course, of course. Let. Um, oh yeah, someone is asking here if Bishop F4 is a is a move here to attack the C7 pawn. Uh, yes, that could be possible. Uh, let's see. Yes. Uh, bishop f4. Mm. I'm sure that it's not uh, the most common move, but uh, okay, it's possible. Can knight d5 be played then? Or is that not really. Yes, where uh, black then wants white to returns uh, to mm. g3 with the bishop threatening e4 yeah. uh, with the win over tempo. Yeah. Uh, so if bishop f4 and this, after bishop g3, white is threatening e4 and uh, winning a tempo and also perhaps attacking yes. a bit on c7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. oh, well, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to respond to bishop f4. Uh, Perhaps someone saying that perhaps then white could uh, black could play bishop a6 with the idea that if queen takes c7, queen takes d4. Yeah, that could be a possibility. But if white plays e3 afterwards, what will happen then? I think we need to take a break because Ari is coming here. Yes. Ari Stigler is coming yes. to the studio. But very, very interesting that uh, it's always very nice when, when, when you suggest um, different moves on the chat. Mm -hmm. um, thank you. So thank you for doing that. And um, yeah, you can yeah, always th This do can that. be an interesting game uh, for sure. Yeah. So board number three, we're expecting an interesting <laughs> game. Mm, <laughs> yes. All right. Mm. We'll be back very soon with some more commentary of the, uh, of the other games. But mm -hmm. first, we'll have an interview with Ari Siegler, who takes care of the bookstore in the here in the tournament. We'll be back very soon. Thank you. Thank you.
We are back here in the studio and we have a special guest with us right now, international master and chess coach, Ari Siegler, um, who is taking care of the bookstore here in the tournament, selling many different books who, which you will introduce to us right now. Right. <coughs> yeah? Yeah, I was, uh, we were talking about tactics last time, so I was, uh, I was thinking, uh, let's uh, talk about this subject in uh, detail this time, because um, the first aspect of tactics is, of course, to know the basics, to be able to find a tactical solution in a position. But when you play extremely uh, strong players, it's not so easy to win with tactics because they see everything. So if we start with this book, this is an old classic by Rudolf Spielmann, The Art of Sacrificing Chess. There are several good things in this book. Uh, Alyeshin said that, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful book. He has written about all kinds of sacrifices except the most important, the intuitive sacrifice. Yeah. So, what about the intuitive sacrifice? Are there any books about this? Yes, actually there are. So, we have, we have this book. This is an unknown classic by Grandmaster Ivan Sokolov. He started very early with uh, analyzing chess, a lot of openings, and he had played uh, many years in the top. He won against Kasparov uh, in a famous game from Vacancy. And in this book, Sacrifice and Initiative from 2013, he's talking uh, among other themes about uh, the intuitive sacrifice because when you play these uh, other grandmasters which have like 27 or 26 50 okay that's not the common day-to-day uh, -day routine for most of us but anyway if you want to learn anything about this process then then you need to to work with uh, complicated material and this book is very complicated. The point is that when you, if you want to beat a very strong player, you have to take some kind of risk. You have to put your chess on the line. And uh, that's, that's a scary thing. And uh, to be able to develop this kind of um, uh, skill, you have to do it many times. So it's it's about maybe imagining yourself like a gladiator. I mean we are going to play gladiator gladiator chess for life and death. Every move counts. If you want to reach this kind of standard you have to to read complicated books which take a long time to read because many of these positions you can't you can't just solve it in five minutes or ten minutes some some maybe you have to sit for yourself half an hour that's only one position in in, in these games he studied the sacrifices of Mikhail Tal with a computer Ivan Sokolov and he found out that the computers could not refute 90% of Mikhail Tal's sacrifices. That means, so even though many grandmasters have afterwards said that our oh, Mikhail Tal is playing bluff sacrifices and so on, but if they would play him, there would be some kind of compensation somewhere every time when he makes a sacrifice. So it's not easy business. You can have a even the computers have difficulties to refute Mikhail Tal's uh, sacrifices. A grandmaster should be able to know everything and to become a grandmaster you should also be able to know everything. So that's a good reason to study a book like this. There is another book which also have this kind of thinking, Advanced Chess by Lev Psachis. Uh, this is the new edition, the old edition 
exist and it's practically the same book they have added uh, one extra chapter in the end which is about advanced tactics in the French defense but for instance uh, as I regard myself as a chess coach before a chess player there are a lot of games here which I use in my in my education uh, for instance uh, isolated queen pawn I, I've studied many many years and he makes a very logical uh, uh, log logical chapters in this one and uh, when I study his games and compare with my own notes I always find something new so how is that possible even though some of the games I've studied maybe 20 hours and, and when I look at Psachy's annotations I found something else okay why of course this guy he is like a genius he won the Soviet championship twice I mean the Soviet championship twice it's almost impossible to do so he's, he has a fantastic uh, knowledge of chess and he's famous for his books about French defense and in some positions he can just write like I think white has a small advantage here and I have to study the position for a long time and finally I see yeah, he's right <laughs> the guy is right so he has some kind of super intuition knows a lot about chess but he is also uh, academic and scientific in his approach he is computer analyzing the games watching everything carefully so if you if you're going to study this book I mean if you study it's like three four hours every day it still takes maybe two months to go through this book it's 400 pages to go through the book and uh, not only reading it superficially but to, to bring the book in your thinking for the future games so what we're talking about today is like uh, if you want to do something very good and to put your your life into chess so then uh, you have to work a lot and the Russian says you have to work six hours per day about five six years to be able to know how strong you can be and then when you know how strong you can be you still have plenty of work ahead and uh, to most become stronger of course yeah 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 because yeah. Uh, I mean uh, you, you can become an international master and you feel you can become even better then you have to work even uh, another couple of years so that was the difficult stuff I would also like to mention something new um, it's, uh, it's about uh, strategy or structures this book uh, came out during the autumn and uh, this year 2019 yeah. last year then. yeah yeah like four months ago yeah and uh, Michel Chichin is a very famous trainer he has been uh, he's the FIDE the top FIDE coach so some people could say he's the best trainer in the world at least uh, he has the titles I have no titles as a trainer <laughs> but it's difficult to know who are the best trainer but of course he's he's one of the top trainers in the world and uh, together with the uh, grandmaster Moore he has been uh, writing about understanding Maroc's structures and there are actually no book like this before and uh, one can ask uh, should that be necessary well actually I think it's a very good idea because in many positions white or black can make a transposition to a kind of Maroxi system and this book is very easy to read they have not uh, dwelled into all subtleties and theoretical nuances but try to show different kind of ideas which white or black can use in this opening so if you read this book you will be able to handle the position pretty well you have to calculate of course and then you can read other books after that mm. there are books who talks about this structure but not this structure only 
for instance, if you are going to play some hedgehog lines, it could be interesting to have some some pre knowledge bef yeah. before. So today we were talking about uh, difficult books, which demands that you sit down for yourself with a chessboard, looking at the positions, trying to understand it, and so on. I thought I was going to show a little little example from Psaki's book. Yeah. It goes very quick. Can I just? Yeah, well, sure. When you're done, I will just ask you a question. See if we can have it uh, focused. Focused, if it's possible. Let's see the oh, sorry. tech guy is going to fix this now. Yeah. Not my face, please. <laughs> okay, it's a little bit difficult to see. But uh, this is from Psaki's book. And in the game they played bishop takes e7, which is fine. Oh, now it's, it's dark. The screen got dark. Oh, sorry, it's <laughs> my fault. Excellent. But Psachis is asking himself, okay, what about rook takes e7? Rook takes e7, magnificent, wonderful. What about it? And that's a fantastic thing with this book. So when you read it, he, he puts a question to you. What about rook takes e7? Is that okay? And in this position, you need to calculate at least one half an hour to get an answer. It's an easy question, but a difficult yeah. answer. Fantastic uh, thing. Yeah. And how can, uh, how can he discover these kind of things? Because a move like rook takes e7, it's not suggested by the computer, because the computer thinks it's bad. So only a super grandmaster like Psachis, he knows that intuitively he knows this can be good and he, he's trying to look at it and even though the computer think it's bad he finds out that actually it's pretty good hmm. maybe not winning but probably winning a, in a practical game Very and i mean we we are playing against humans two gladiators there without computers right without weapons man-to-man -man fight in a dark alley <laughs> so that's uh, how we won it and that's how Magnus Carlsen plays he's trying to get positions with man-to-man -man fight not so much uh, only know how from the books so well that's my contribution today I hope uh, we find some guys can I just ask you a question before you go Yes, of course. Yes. Um, okay, because we got a question here where someone asked if there were any books from 2019 that you recommended. And that's why I asked you if this book about the Marozzi uh, structures, if that one was from 2019. Yeah. Are any of the right. other books that you were talking about today, are, there, are yeah. they also from this year? Actually, this is from 2019. Yeah. But it's an update from an old book. It's a one new chapter, but it's from 2019. Um, and would you recommend these books for simply someone who has ambitions of becoming very strong? Or do you think that someone already needs to have a certain um, yeah. level to, to start reading? The higher the better. <laughs> you should be international master to read this book. But, I mean, if you have like 2200 in rating and are willing to work hard, it will be a wonderful time. You will never regret it. Great. If you have like 1900, you have to read it for one year. Maybe read it four or five times because you have to be very skilled tactically in order to understand books like this. Because some of the positions he don't explain and you don't know why is this alternative not in the book. And you have to think by yourself like 10 minutes to understand, ah, okay, yeah. Because my, my suggestion is, when you read books like this, you should understand everything in the book. All lines and notes, everything. You shouldn't just think like this, okay, I understand the concept. Hmm. No, it's not enough with books like this. You must understand every line, yeah. every suggestion, every word. 
and that will make you a better player. Yeah. And if you have like 1900, it will take a long time. But of course, you would be incredibly much better. It's like or maybe 50 points better, and that's not bad for one chess book. Normally, you gain you win one rating point per book you read, so it's a tough work. But this is times 50. Yeah, so it's like it's, it's a marvelous book. But if you have 2200 or 2400, you won't go, go 50 points with this one. But if you have 1900, you should do 50 points. But it will take a longer time to read. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming here to the studio to show us the books that you have there that people can buy. My very pleasure. Very interesting. And uh, very interesting to learn so much about different books. Really, I'm, r I'm learning a lot. I want to buy these books as well now. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you very much. We will soon be back with some more games. And we'll just take a short break now. Thank you. Cheers. Okay.
Welcome back to the commentary. We are now back once again with Grandmaster mm -hmm. Ralph Akison. And we will continue looking at some games from round seven in Rolton Cup. Um, just wanted to remind once again that this book is on sale in the bookstore with Ari Siegler. We just had Ari Siegler. I can just keep showing it. But we just had um, Ari Siegler here in the studio. And uh, okay, like this. Here we go. <laughs> and, uh, um, and yeah, and he's selling this book for a cheaper price than the normal price. So if you buy it online, it will cost 360 crowns, which is around 36 euros. But if you buy it here in the tournament, it will be 250 crowns, uh, approximately 25 euros. And if you buy it here in the tournament, you also get it signed by Ulf Anderson. And this book talks about Ulf Anderson and his life uh, as a chess player. So very interesting book that if you yeah if you're interested in 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 reading about Ulf Anderson, we had him here in the studio before, legendary grandmaster. Then definitely you should try to buy it here during the tournament. But let's go back now to the games. Yes, look. So uh, let's look at the games again. We are still in, um, still looking at board number three between Luis Ernesto Casada Perez and Dimitri Collars. Yes. And let's just see very quickly. He played af um, after b6. He played bishop g5. Yes, that's a standard move, uh, I think. Yeah. So we were saying that both knight f3 and bishop mm -hmm. g5 are standard moves here. Bishop a6. And here they actually go for a, a line which uh, gives uh, uh, an early exchange of queens. <coughs> queen a4. Which other lines are there here? If you uh, don't play queen a4. Uh, well, if, if you play knight f3 earlier, then for sure queen c2 would be yeah. an option. But when you yeah. played bishop g5, yes. When you play bishop g5 already, uh, let's look at that position. Yeah, which is the position of the game after bishop a6. Uh, then possibly black can take on d4 or can he? If queen, ta if queen c2, queen takes d4, can... It looks a bit risky because yeah. white will win some tempers. Uh, otherwise, it will Group be. Um, he can castle or play knight bd7, and it will be a, a bit similar to the game, uh, with the exception that the queens are still on the board. Yeah, but then if black castles are played knight bd7, then perhaps after knight f3 there could be some transpositions to knight f3 first. Uh, yes, maybe. Queen c2, yes. maybe. Mm. But let's see, queen a4 was played here. Yes. Let's check. Queen d7, queen takes d7, knight b d7. Yes, uh, and uh, of course uh, the early exchange of queens perhaps means that we uh, must expect a rather quiet game. But, uh, well, Still, white has a small advantage to due to the pair of bishops, uh, which may be important in the long run. Yeah. <coughs> so let's look at the yeah, rook c1, yes, and c5. It's normal. Uh, black wants to play c5. Uh, he doesn't like the backward uh, pawn on c7. Yeah. So very typical to try to yes. uh, push the c pawn, mm -hmm. not create, not have any weakness there. Knight f3, rook yes. c8, and e3. Yes, with e3 uh, he allows the exchange of uh, white squared bishops. Uh, let's see, could I could I have played uh, g3? Was it possible? Uh, g3 here. Maybe or maybe not. Uh, Will be perhaps a bit difficult to castle. Is that true? Yes. As the e two pawn is hanging and uh, 
can it really play e3 and move your king? Or maybe black can Stand simply off. take on d4 and uh, and uh, later on uh, bishop b7 and white will have some un unpleasant threats along the diagonal. Yeah, we can see here if pawn takes, I suppose, rook takes c8 this and after knight takes perhaps bishop b7 yes it's a bit annoying on the a8 h1 diagonal a bit annoying white well, can play uh, f3 or something but um, maybe perhaps it's not exactly what white wants yeah so, so e3 was played instead yes here. and um, it looks like a rather slow game now uh, and uh, Actually, I would guess a draw here. Already? Uh, then, well, not already, but, but uh, eventually. Yeah. The, the position seems quite equal uh, indeed. But and this uh, was the game that we thought would be the very interesting uh, one out of the three first games. Yeah. Maybe it could be an interesting slow game. Yeah, ma yeah so wh White uh, went for uh, an early exchange of queens and um, maybe. Um, that was some kind of emergency exit because he wasn't uh, completely prepared for the line. Yeah, as we saw, he did. Why um, Quesada Perez did think quite a bit in the opening, mm. so which could indicate that he wasn't fully prepared for this line. Mm. Yes. The game. Should we go to next one? Yes, we do that. Board number four between Norman's Mises and Sergey Volkov. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, Volkov, uh, I mentioned that he got a draw yesterday and uh, I think he was uh, slightly disappointed with Against that Frederick result. Against Yes, so probably he wants to take uh, a good revenge today, although he has black. Against Mises, so c4, e5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2. C6, <laughs> yeah, that, that's a rather ambitious, ambitious move. Black uh, wants to play d5 early. d4, yes. And um, yes, e4, it's uh, the critical move. If black takes, uh, then white can just take with the queen and uh, when black has played c6, he doesn't have the normal uh, win over tempo by uh, knight c6. Indeed. So he played e4, which is which is interesting. Black already mm, takes some uh, space in the center. And knight h3 was played, so the knight is developing through h3. Yes, and uh, at some point white normally has to play f3 in order to challenge the black e4 pawn. And uh, possibly the knight will return to f2 or uh, sometimes may maybe to f4, depending on the circumstances. d5 was played here? Yes. Yes, bl black already has uh, the center. It's a bit unusual uh, with uh, with the black only in the center. This early as well. Yes. This is move five. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. So very early. Um, yeah, t tough play by black, and uh, it certainly indicates that uh, Volkov uh, wants to win today. Yeah. Castle was played here, d takes c4. Okay, so now he's breaking his pawn chain by taking the yeah, c4 pawn. Yeah, okay, that was a bit unexpected, I uh, to say. Uh, so what can't get the pawn back immediately, but, um, but uh, in a while he will get the e, uh, the e4 pawn or the c4. With queen's Two. No, with knight d2, I suppose. Yeah, he probably will try to get the e4 pawn, which is difficult for black to defend. 
at some point. Yeah, maybe knight c3 is a normal move. Or may maybe even knight g5. Bishop f5. Knight c3, knight f5, knight g5. Oh, okay, um, after. Yes. Yeah. And then, uh, well, uh, black doesn't want to play queen e7. Uh, th that uh, looks like an ugly move. So he, he should have to give the, the e4 pawn back. Uh, it was a bit unexpected to take on c4, but um, I, I guess no, uh, Volkov knows uh, what he's doing. Uh, and. Um, uh, well, I, I, d I wouldn't expect to queen e7 here. I'm just blocking this bishop. No, no it do doesn't F8. look right. He probably has to play something else and, uh, more uh, and just give the e4 pawn away. Okay, so... Yeah, so the pawn structure changed quite a bit here. Yes, yes. After this move, knight c3 was play was played. Yeah, mm -hmm. let me just see because sometimes. Yeah, so knight c3 was played here, h6 to prevent this knight g5. But of course, the pawn is hanging now on e4. Well, they can't take it immediately because uh, the the the, uh, the knight on h3 is uh, on pre. Yeah, very good that you point that out. Uh, why can I take them the pawn immediately because he takes and takes and after bishop takes the bis the knight on h3 is hanging mm -hmm. so very good that you point that out f3 was played instead okay someone is asking if white should have started with knight g5 here yeah th that, that was uh, that would be possible uh, t to avoid the, the problems uh, connected with the knight and uh, I suppose that he will get the the e4 pawn back uh, in that case without difficulties. And um, are there any problems here? Yeah, that looks uh, rather normal, uh, in fact. So maybe this move was. Well, well bl okay, black may play h6, uh, knight takes e4, take, take, and then uh, maybe uh, simply knight d7, knight f6 with the window of tempo, and, uh, and um, uh, that position looks uh, reasonably even, I, I think. But but the knight g5 is certainly a, an option here. It yeah, ha it has to be. But knight c3 was played instead, and then h6, which is normal mm. to prevent knight g5, mm. f3. Yes, and now uh, White uh, changes his uh, strategy a bit. It seems uh, that he can't get the pawn back in a normal way, so he decides to go for uh, some kind of gambit instead. Uh, now I think that black uh, may keep his extra pawn uh, for a while. At this least. pawn is quite difficult to yes to 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 get yes, and when he plays f three, uh, then um, it means, of course, uh, that he can't really mm, get the e four pawn. He, he just wants to exchange it and uh, and have some kind of compensation. E takes f3 was played. Mm -hmm. E takes f3, so he wants to open up the e file. Mm -hmm. Bishop e7. Yeah, that makes sense. Otherwise, uh, rook e1 can be a bit annoying. Yeah, as the king is still in the center. Queen e2 was played, attacking the c4 pawn. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so. Black gives. 
Uh, the pawn, yes. Now this d4 pawn was hanging. Yes, but Check. probably it's dangerous to take it. So yeah. let's see. Um, it looks dangerous in this position to take mm. it. Um, indeed, of course. White gets a lot of initiative, I suppose, after bishop e3. Yeah, yes. And then rook d1 and... Not sure if even bishop c5 could be coming at some point mm. to prevent black from... Yeah, wha white black from moves his uh, rooks to the central files and... E uh, and D, yeah. The, the, the development advantage uh, may get uh, quite serious. Castle was played here. Mm -hmm. And now rook d1 protecting this pawn because maybe now it's a... Uh, Okay, no, of course, the the bishop was hanging, so it wasn't really hanging the pawn. Oh, okay, yeah, it was, it was with check, yeah. Yes. So. Uh, and bishop e6, yeah, yes, black wants to keep the pawn here. No, he wants to keep it. But he gets knight f4. Yeah, that's uh, typical, annoying the bishop on e6. But uh, black can defend it. By putting it on d5. Yeah, which is what he did. Yes. He took on d5 and mm. c takes d5. So here black is a pawn up, but uh, the d5 pawn is uh, rather weak and uh, and uh, black really has to face uh, uh, an a strong ini initiative uh, from uh, white side. Do you think that there is enough compensation for the pawn here? But uh, maybe he will get the pawn back uh, rather quickly. Uh, now, when knight c6 looks like the normal move, and uh, then uh, possibly. Bishop e5, I think. Because if take and take, the d5 pawn is hanging. Yes. Um, and you're still attacking the f6. Yes. Uh, and white may play f4 onwards to uh, open up for the, uh, the white squared bishop. Yeah. And then the white d5 may, pawn may get the, the pawn well. back, but, but uh, I, I still think that, that uh, black is completely okay here. Maybe he can go for uh, knight b4, knight d3. That could be an option for black. Maybe. To enter white's position with quite an annoying knight here. Yes. Um. O or some uh, queen move and uh, then uh, rook, one rook to d8. The problem is that if black loses this pawn, couldn't the c4 pawn as well become weak? Yeah, of course, he, he must be careful so he uh, does not lose uh, both pawns. Because that would not be... He can afford be to give one away, but not both. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, okay. Yeah, interesting position. Uh, oh, some moves have been played. Rook e8 was played here and f4. Yes. So now sort of threat, putting some threats on the d5 pawn, mm. perhaps not to take on f6 immediately, but at least to put some, some threats into the d5 yes. pawn there. Yes. Should we go to the next game? W we'll do it. Yeah. Yeah, th that position is... Uh, Unclear, uh, <laughs> uh, they, they put it sometimes, uh, yes. <laughs> mm. Yeah, this little unclear sign. Mm. That's what we're putting on this game mm. <laughs> here on board number four. Let's go to board number five between Jesper Thibault and Toivo Keinanen. Mm -hmm. So two young Scandinavian players, Toivo Keinanen from Finland yes. and uh, Jesper Thibault from Denmark. Oh, that's a completely different uh, kind of position, but uh, let's uh, see it from the beginning. Yeah. Um. Yes, it will be uh, the Catalan opening. 
Yeah. Uh, yes, uh, standard position in the Catalan. And 92, yes. Uh, sometimes white prefers uh, rook d1 first, but uh, well, it's a matter of uh, taste. Mm. E4. Yes. And here uh, I ac actually think that uh, simply bishop b7 is uh, the normal move. And then white may play e5 and black goes back to e8. And uh, here white has a space advantage, but on the other hand, uh, it's uh, not th that easy to find good squares uh, for the pieces. Is c5 coming as well? Yeah, to break black, the black uh, wants to play rook c8 and c5. And um, sometimes the knight goes up to c7 later on. And this would be considered. Um, would this be considered the closed Catalan? Uh, yes, it is uh, the closed Catalan. Uh, yeah, yes, uh, and uh, I think uh, th the opening is considered to be rather equal. Hmm. Chances for both players. Normally, what would be happy with that kind of space advantage, but uh, his pieces are indeed uh, not in perfect positions. This knight here, is it normal f for this knight to be placed on d2 instead of c3? Um, well, um, uh, what has two options, B but um, sometimes he plays um, rook d1 and then uh, let's say on move uh, 8. Yeah, let's go. Uh, uh, yeah, so he took on... Yeah. So e4 and he took on c4. Yes. Uh, well, uh, w if white plays rook d1 uh, on move 8, then he has uh, the possibility. Oh, here. Next move. Yeah, yes. Knight d7. Yeah, sorry. And now. Yes. Rook d1. Then he may play uh, b3 and uh, then afterwards decide about what to do with the knight. It can go to c3 or to d2. Yeah. Okay, but let's see what happened in the game. Yes. So, n um, d takes c4 was played after e4. Mm -hmm. Knight takes c4, bishop b7, bishop f4. Yes. So, the black uh, kind of play is perhaps more ambitious than uh, just taking on e4. I think we discussed uh, that position yesterday uh, and uh, then uh, what would normally have uh, a rather uh, pleasant uh, position. And here if black can play c5 th then it will be rather okay. That but is what he played, right? Yes. c5. Mm -hmm. But he still has some problems with the d6 square, so white wi may enter there. Not at the moment, perhaps, because the e4 pawn is hanging. Hmm. But uh, later on. Rook e1 was played, rook, F rook fe1 to mm -hmm. protect the e4 pawn. Mm -hmm. C takes d4, and knight d6. Yes. So not taking... Of course, yeah. Not no, taking back because then perhaps. Uh, yeah, why cannot? He can do it. Uh, Take back. Black can play maybe rook c8. Uh, or uh, let's see here. With idea to. Can you take after the queen? Well, the, the idea is uh, simply to. Um, to um, make a pin on the c-file, uh, the white queen is a bit embarrassed. And to perhaps Yes, uh, rook, rook c8 uh, threatens e5, uh, th that's true. Yeah. So white has to move his queen. But I was wondering if then black can take here. Oh yes, maybe he can, uh, maybe he can. To play e5 after. Yes. Yes, uh, so may maybe white shouldn't play like that. No, um, but he didn't. He played knight d6 instead, so... Yes. N now he expects... Uh, he, he wants to get uh, one of black's bishops, and hopefully he'll get the pawn uh, on d4 later. 
This one right yes. here, yes. So if uh, things go well, what will end up uh, with the pair of bishops and uh, some advantage in an open position? Yeah, <coughs> because um, the pair of bishops are very strong in, in open positions, yes, right? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so bishop takes d6, bishop yeah, takes d6. Yeah, I think black didn't have any choice there. He had to give up the bishop. Yeah, very hard to know what this bishop is doing. If a bishop a6, I think that white can play take on d4 with a big threat to go knight c6. Yeah. So he took on d6, took mm. on d6, and now he lost his dark square bishop here. Yes. Uh, so the pair of bishops is gone for black. Uh, d3 was played as an intermediate move here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, interesting. Uh, so with the idea of not placing the knight on d4? Or yeah, the, the normal move would be rook e8, but then uh, I suppose the knight takes d4 and uh, white should be a bit better. Threatening things. Or maybe white can even play e5. Let's see here. Here? Yes, maybe. Play e5 here. Yes. That could be possible. And after? Uh, afterwards he has to take uh, D4, but uh, th this uh, looks uh, rather promising for white. Think of something like, like this. I uh, know. Yeah. So so maybe it's a useful uh, intermediate move D3. And also placing the queen on 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 this file where mm. it's not really yes. protected right now. Mm. So. Uh, Bishop takes e4. Okay, he goes for a tactical sequence. Aha, if rook takes, then black intends knight c5, I suppose. Yeah, that looks... So a, tactic a tactical very, uh, move here. Mm -hmm. Combination. Yeah, that looks interesting indeed. Uh, what is happening here? So the queen has to move, I suppose. Yes. As bishop cannot take because then the oh sorry, bishop cannot take because the queen is hanging on d3. Yes. So black will take the e4 rook and white takes on f8 and black is a pawn up at the moment. Have you something like queen d1? Or uh, where yes. should the queen go? Just thinking that it's good if it's protected. Or e3 perhaps. Uh, I don't know. Okay, e3. Yeah. Uh, yes. But he didn't take. No, uh, it, on it e4. didn't. Uh, th he didn't play like that. No. No, After really. bishop takes e4, queen d4 was played. Yes. So he probably thought that black would get quite a lot of. Yes, uh, th that's uh, a reasonable move, yeah. I'm sure. E5, yes. Yeah. Otherwise, after rook e8 which perhaps would look normal in order to to uh, save the rook and then um, yeah, th then white can simply take on e4 uh, yes two pieces for rook uh, and that looks excellent for white oh yeah because the queen is not on d uh, on e th on d3 anymore so uh, mm -hmm. So this knight c5 is yes. not possible. Th anyway. That's excellent for what? Yeah. But we can see that e5. black is constantly is constantly doing initiative moves. Yes. 
Okay, this d3, this bishop takes e4, and now e5, three moves in a row, which are. Yes, he's forcing playing some uh, unexpected moves. Yeah, but forcing white to do something about his pieces immediately. I think that black will end up in a weak position when uh, the white bishops, or one of them at least, uh, will get quite strong. Just yes. Okay. I don't really like the, the uh, black uh, strategy here. It looks like some of its pieces are a bit loose. Yes. But... Um, Okay, rook e8. Need to needs to protect the rook somehow. Rook a d1. Bishop takes f3. Bishop takes f3. E4. Yes. E4 here. Yeah, that that is uh, necessary, more or less, isn't it? If rook c8, then uh, white may. Simply play bishop b7, uh, winning the exchange. Or maybe maybe there is something even better, but at least he can win an exchange. Yeah. yeah so, Wait, whoops. <laughs> so we can see that the uh, rook on a8 is now targeted. Mm. So e4 was played. Bishop takes e4. Knight takes e4, and rook takes e4. Yeah, this should be clear advantage for white. I think the the bishop must be superior compared with the black knight. So is something like this natural now? Oh, okay, so there is a pin here, which is important too. Yes. To note. Yes. Uh, maybe the normal move would be taken on e4, followed by uh, rook c8. I think. Also important to note that black could have some eighth rank problems, so yes. important for uh, the black king to get some to get mm. some air. Yes. To so black should be playing some some pawn move on the king side, so that the king has somewhere to go, and all the pieces can be used in the That's position. Here, um, uh, for instance, maybe um, simply queen b7 is uh, unpleasant for black. White threatens to take a pawn, and he also threatens bishop f4, I think, when black can't protect uh, the d7 knight. Yes, there is a big pin here. Yes. Okay, so we will see what happens actually knight f6 was played yes okay here yes so uh, yeah uh, yes threatening the queen and white is uh, this uh, the actual position yeah I believe so um, white may play Maybe um, Queen F three or Queen B seven, perhaps uh, one of those moves. And um, yeah, I think white is better, but but uh, possibly black can defend. So black is uh, fighting for sur survival here. Yeah, and maybe. If the queen is on f3, then well. Yeah, the rook is, uh, protected, rook is protected, which uh, is uh, a nice positionally. And the queen f3 actually threatens bishop uh, e7, I think. Yeah, nice move. If, let's say, if the queen was already on f3, mm. then why could play bishop e7 with the idea of threatening both the queen? And the knight, mm -hmm. um, black would lose this f6 pawn, yeah, yes. and queen cannot take on e7 because the rook, whoops, the rook on a8 is hanging. Mm -hmm. yes. So very good, very nice tactic there, but probably 
black will not allow this. No. Uh, no, I, I'm not sure which is uh, the best move for white. Uh, queen b7 looks like an active possibility also. Queen b7, then maybe queen c8, and black can try to defend. Yeah, should we go to yes. some other game? Do you want to look at some new games? Yeah, or uh, take the next one. Then. Okay. Just so we don't miss too much on any yes. game. This looks like Let's more of a st uh, standard uh, situation. We can just quickly go through here what's been happening between Shardul, Gagare and Kaido Kolaut. And if I am not wrong, I believe that Shardul Gagare had a yoga lesson this morning. Oh, yes, uh, yes. I think I saw something about it. Yeah, yeah in the schedule it said something <laughs> about him. Um, I believe it was Shardul Gagare yeah, who had this. Yeah, that's quite unusual yeah, for a uh, chess player, yes. Very early in the morning, I think it was 7.30 or something. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully a lot of chess players felt like doing some yoga yeah, today. Yes, so I, I wonder <laughs> how many uh, participants uh, who uh, attended the class. But no, but uh, hopefully many. Yes. So uh, very nice to do some mm. active things during a tournament as yes. well. Yes. G6 was played. <coughs> yes, G6 is a rather sharp move. Uh, I mean, it's uh, kind of uh, a Queen's Indian, at least if white plays a D4, and uh, then uh, it's rather uh, tough of black to play uh, G6, queen, uh, Bishop G7. Yeah, activating his bishop very quickly on mm. the. A1, H8 diagonal, mm -hmm. um, bishop b2, castles, castles, e6, d4, d5. Yes. So. Uh, d5 is uh, a standard move here, I suppose. But, um, well, uh, the, the position is uh, slightly unusual because of the position of the black bishop. Usually it's uh, at uh, on e7 in such uh, situations. But uh, there are advantages and uh, disadvantages, of course, also with the bishop on g7. Do you want to tell us one advantage with having it on, on G7? Uh, well, um, maybe black can play, for instance, uh, knight E4 and then C5, and white could be a bit bothered by the long black diagonal. Yes. Yes, uh, there, there could be a pin um, along the diagonal, and um, maybe with the bishop on e7, black would have a, a better control over c5, uh, which is also important sometimes. Yeah, if the bishop was here on e7, mm. indeed. But, well, uh, it's interesting. Kaido is a tough player. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I think he has quite a good uh, self-confidence now after his uh, brilliant game uh, yesterday. Yeah, definitely. We had him here yesterday in the studio where he showed, ha where he showed us his game against uh, Hampus Sorensen. Yeah, that was a great game. Yeah, very, very nice game from uh, Kulaut. Okay, let's see. C takes d5, e takes d5. Uh, it's it's quite normal for white to change on d5 in such uh, positions. And uh, he does it at the moment when uh, when uh, black uh, more or less has to take with the pawn. Queen e7, knight e5, rook d8, queen c2, knight a6 and rook a c1. Yes, knight a6 is uh, an interesting move. It's not completely standard, but um, often the knight can get into play when black plays c5, and 
then later on the knight may go to c5 and possibly to e4 later on or c5 e6 could be possible yeah black d doesn't want to be sitting with a knight on a6 no uh, of course not forever of course not so this knight needs to get into play mm -hmm. but then my question is why does the knight go to a6 and not to uh, for instance uh, for instance d7 yes maybe there could be some concrete problems uh, let's see wh what would happen after knight b5 knight bd7 knight b5 that could be a serious problem for black yeah we can see that the c7 pawn is hanging and oh sorry the c7 pawn is hanging and the c s <laughs> the c7 pawn is hanging and the c6 square is quite weak as well yes so uh, or, or uh, let's see or can he take on e5 here and then play knight e8 afterwards is this possible defending c7 uh, this could be possible although i'm not absolutely sure yeah <coughs> does this knight become passive though or is that not a problem after perhaps knight c6, uh, c6 yeah he will like he will push uh, the white knight back and uh, yeah, th then we can attack the e5 pawn. Well, I'm not sure about the position. The e5 pawn is quite weak here. Yeah. So maybe that wasn't a threat. I mean, uh, the idea with knight b5 was perhaps not that dangerous for black. Okay, but this is the position right now. Yes. So rook a c1 was played and c5 yeah it seems it seems quite normal uh, he he likes to play c5 in order to uh, activate uh, the a6 knight afterwards yeah a and he also has put the rook on d8 so um, he has uh, a good protection of the d5 pawn at the moment indeed so could be hard for white to uh, put a lot of pressure on this yes uh, yeah the, the position should be roughly equal maybe a small advantage for white and but not much yeah but th this can <laughs> be an interesting game it's uh, very hard to predict uh, what will happen the the, the central position okay. is quite um, what to say, uh, fluid, uh, many uh, different things may happen. And e3 here was played to protect the d4 pawn. Yes. Um, which looks very natural as white could of course not take on c5 because the e5 knight is hanging. So mm. e3 to sustain the center of course black now has uh, the possibility to exchange on d4 and uh, the pawn structure will be symmetrical but in that case i think he still has some uh, troubles due to the a6 knight yeah then we can see that the knight on a6 looks quite misplaced uh, yes. in this square mm -hmm. and also he has to move his queen rather quickly because uh, white will play rook f e1 and uh, black has to move the queen again so probably he does not want to take on e d4 so what does he want to do does he just want to keep the position like this and play perhaps something like rook c8 yes or maybe knight c7 can be an option Knight c7, knight e6, uh, that is a possibility. So 
someone was saying if white could take on c5 with the idea that after queen takes e5 there is knight oh uh -huh, that, that is D5. possible okay okay but queen i was just wondering queen e6 but th then the knight takes f6 Perfect. and the uh, yeah. bishop takes uh, b7 winning a piece here yes so exchange so, so uh, okay white could have taken on c5 but but uh, then uh, black would have taken back with the knight i think yeah Act and then this activating the knight so perhaps that's something that you'd rather do when this knight has already moved somewhere else to perhaps c7 yes then you could take on c5 maybe mm. okay should we go to the mm -hmm. next game yes rather complicated position this is a very interesting game i believe uh, on on board number seven between yes. milton panzer and tiger tiger healer person yes the tiger is black again as he was uh, yesterday and uh, he plays um, something which uh, looks a bit like a king's indian but is actually a bit different yeah but very interesting for uh, for the swedish audience to have this this game as milton panzer is one of the top rated swedish juniors yes um and uh, he's playing against Tiger Hiller person, one of yeah. the best Swedish players. It's an important battle right now, yeah. be between uh, maybe the two best uh, Swedish players at the moment in the tournament. Oh, uh, in the tournament, yeah. Mm. Um, so uh, very, very interesting that they had they are playing here, and uh, it will be very interesting for us to follow this mm. game see what happens but they're both quite low on time for only 13 moves yeah th I, I think, think they have uh, played uh, some uh, unusual stuff already in the opening a5 here is this yeah already uh, on the second move e5 it's not uh, that common <sighs> but um, so very early <laughs> yes the standard move for white would be knight f3 but then he has to consider black playing e5, e4, like in uh, the game um, uh, Mrs. Volkov. Yeah. Black may try to to get the central advantage, but the d5 is uh, yeah, a more quiet move. Certainly possible. D5 closing. Mm. Closing the center. The center. A5. So A5 here. Yes. Is uh, this common? I mean, the position is itself is not very common, but A5 is normally intended to avoid while playing B4. And he can support the square C5 uh, where he wants to put a knight later on. Yeah. But uh, compared to normal King's Indian positions where black has played knight f6 early, he's now ready to play f5 right away. Yeah, so black wants to play f5. Yeah, yeah that's uh, the normally the move uh, which he likes to play. And uh, he can win some time compared to a normal King's Indian. G6 was played, mm -hmm. e4. Yes. Knight a6, bishop e3, h5. Yes. So interesting stuff again. And um, uh, well, uh, he, he wants to exchange uh, the dark squared bishops because uh, for black, uh, the dark squared bishop is the the bad one. Hmm. With bishop h6 then. Yes. Uh, and uh, somehow he he can do it um, qu quicker than normal uh, as he hasn't played uh, bishop g7. Yeah. And, um, well, he hasn't played f5 yet, but, but um, maybe he could have done it on the third move already if he would have liked. But now... 
later on I guess there was a problem because when white plays e4 if black then plays f5 and white takes let's see instead of uh, instead of h5 for instance if white, white takes yes normally black would like to take with the pawn but uh, that is not good at, at the, the moment due to the check yeah and if it takes with the bishop white will get good uh, control of the e4 square yeah this very important square in positions yes. like this yes that white wants to gain mm -hmm. control over mm -hmm. so h5 was played but when black plays h5 isn't this sort of like a way of saying that he won't play f5 um or no, not not in the near future uh, i think but but um but later on perhaps okay so knight f3 mm -hmm. bishop h6 once uh, again like you said he wants to exchange his bad dark square bishop mm -hmm. bishop takes knight takes and a3 yes now what prepares b4 to play on the king queen side so if knight for instance would play to c5 then b4 could be yes but white responds so. mm -hmm. Bishop d7, rook b1, once again preparing b4, right? Yes. Knight c5 and b4, here we have it. Mm -hmm. So, a takes b4, a takes b4, knight a4. Yes. Yeah, that's standard, uh, otherwise he has to go back to a6, but uh, then uh, the knight would be very passive. Yeah. So knight a4 is uh, the logical move. Knight takes a4, rook takes a4, and bishop e2, and well, and then castle, we haven't, we didn't have the, that move yet, but yes. black played castle here. And uh, white probably wants to castle as well, and uh, uh, let's see, uh, it's a rather normal position, but um, when black has played h5, it means th that his king side is perhaps slightly weakened and uh, he must be a bit careful if he wants to play f5 also. Yeah. And for white, the standard break uh, is uh, c5. Maybe it's not possible at the moment because Black may take and take on e4. Let's see what happens then. If takes. White can take on b7. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But, but um, uh, anyway, I, I expect white to castle the first. Which is what he did. Mm -hmm. He castled, and now perhaps there could be ideas with c5 and taking on b7. Perhaps. Yes. Um. Black can play maybe queen e7 and then rook f a8. And well, black has a rather file. solid position, but on the other hand, uh, he doesn't get uh, much of the um, dy dynamic chances which are common in the King's Indian. Yeah. So it's uh, l like uh, a rather safe kind of uh, king's indian but this should be very playable Sa for white safer as well. for black but but um, okay. le less dangerous for white what do you mean with that <laughs> uh, well uh, i mean le less dangerous i mean um, in many king's indian uh, uh, variations okay. Black may get uh, an attack on the king's side eventually, yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, mm -hmm. it's not that easy for black here, I think. Yeah, good. Just wanted to clarify that. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and queen e7 came here in this position. Yes. I think we should take a little break because in 10 15 minutes we are going to have another guest here in the studio. Mm -hmm. But, um, okay. Yeah, wha what would be the move that you would expect here from white? Um, 
if rook a1 black can take on b4 so that is uh, probably not very good uh, maybe a knight move maybe knight e1 and then to d3 perhaps how about something like queen d2 attacking yes. the knight and then rook a1 yeah th that's a possibility also for sure or if you could play rook a1 immediately oh yes the, the pawn is poison uh, right the pawn is poison if rook takes b4 there is queen d2 yes so here black has to play rook f a8 uh, and uh, white has to take probably and uh, now white has to protect no, B4 is still uh, yeah, yeah. Pr uh, uh, it's still poisoned. Yeah. Well, I guess that the position is uh, fairly equal. Yeah. All right. Shall we take a little break so that um, we have some time before the guest, the okay. special guest, okay. comes here to the studio? And yes. I am very excited about introducing this guest. <laughs> yes, um, so, uh, uh, I guess you have met her before, or um, the guest. <laughs> <laughs> I think <Yes>. I have. <laughs> yeah, so we will be back very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. Yes, thank you.
We are back now from the break and we have a very special guest with us. <laughs> um, this is Pia Kramling, uh, my mother. <laughs> so very nice to have you here in the studio. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm really happy that we could have one day where, y where you could come here to the studio. Really nice to have you here. And uh, tell us, because normally you participate in Rolton Cup. Mm, yes, normally I play and I've been playing many, many years in Rilton Cup. But uh, this year I, I, I couldn't play. And do you want to tell us why you couldn't play this year? Yes, uh, I, the last three years um, FIDE has organized uh, the World Rapid and Blitz and uh, the days they had chosen have been between Christmas and New Year and uh, I, I have participated all these three years so that's why I couldn't play in uh, Rilton. So I, I went to Moscow, uh, this hmm? time it was Moscow and I went there. Hmm. Yeah. And how many times have you participated in Rilton? Oh, it's so many that <laughs> I, I don't know the number. But I remember very well uh, the first year when I, I went to Rilton. I was 13 years old. It was played in the Kula School, Christina Berg. And I went there every day except one. I didn't play because I was 13. I, this was 76, 77. I was 13. I didn't dare to play because my brother was not going to play. And I thought my strength was not good enough. But I went there. And I was very inspired. I was very, very much, uh, I enjoyed it so much. I saw Mariotti winning the tournament, the, the, the grandmaster from Italy with a special uh, <laughs> oh, caps <laughs> on him. <laughs> cap. <laughs> cap. And, uh, but it was very good for me because I knew when I went there every day, I, I loved it so much that next year I would play. And after that, I played so many times. And Rilton has been uh, very important for us juniors. It was a chance for us to, to play against very strong players at home. We didn't have to go away. And as I'm brought up in Stockholm, it's my hometown, it was just fantastic to have such a strong tournament here uh, where, I, where I was living. Mm. And was it, how, how strong was it compared to today, back then? Uh, no, the the no, the tournament has become stronger. It has become stronger. But it's also like that, that lots of players then they were only I am, they have become grandmaster. But the tournament has grown, it becomes stronger and also it become bigger. Okay, yeah, I remember when I was 13 and I was here in Rilton, I think I played in Rilton when I was, of course, not Rilton Cup, but I was playing some of the other tournaments because <coughs> here in Rilton there are uh, several tournaments that you can play. You don't have to play Rilton Cup, you can also play Rilton Elo or Rilton under 1800. I think that before they even had Rilton under 1600, if I'm not... They had it for some wrong. time, For yes. some years, yeah. And I remember when I was 13, I heard the story of you <laughs> coming to Rilton and, um, yeah, and wanting to play. And I, I was really happy that I played <laughs> when I was 13 then. And I felt like a good choice. But how, how do you like the tournament now? No, I, th I, I think it's really lovely. I because I, I played in Kula School and I yeah. played when it was out in Salkhubaden, uh, and I played also on. I think we played on Salongena, and we played in uh, München Bryggeriet. It's Pla changed a lot of places. It's yeah. been played in a lot of different places around. Stockholm. Yeah, yeah, in different places, and I think it has been improved every time when it's changing. It becomes, uh, I mean, this hotel is fantastic. The place yeah. in, the, in the heart of Stockholm is so easy for everyone to reach it. And the playing hall is, is very nice. And it's also, you know, this, uh, I like these details that everyone is invited to have coffee and tea when you're playing. Yeah. It's a little bit like every, everyone gets something. And, and uh, so, no, I think it's just yes, a very, very lovely tournament. And we can see that, that there are players who are coming back from abroad and they're coming back years after years to Rilton. So it's a very well-known tournament, not only here in Sweden or in the Nordic countries, but all over the world. Mm -hmm. And that really says something about the tournament, if people keep coming back. Um, and as you said, the location of the tournament now is very good, as it's located at the heart in the heart of Stockholm, right in front of the central station. So it's very easy to travel around Stockholm from here, but also to get here in general. So it's located in a, it could almost not be located in a better place than this mm -hmm. in terms of how central it is. So yeah, I think so too that it's improved. Uh, it's kept improving each year. 
So, I think that maybe we could start looking at some games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, be together. Mm -hmm. um, because that would be very interesting to do that. And we can see that in the first board there has alre already been a draw. Move 30 between Arseny Nestrov and Elshan Moradiabadi. Um, so we have the results. I think that we should go through the games that are being played right now. Mm -hmm. And then we could see, perhaps me and Ralph could see later, how these games were decided. Mm -hmm. But on board three, um, <coughs> Luis Ernesto Quesada Perez lost against Dimitri Collars. Um, so we can see quite a big result already in the top three boards. And another result was on board six. Shardul Gagare uh, drew Kaido Kulaut. So uh, move 18. So, or wait. Is this right? Was there a move 18? It seems like it was already a move 18 a draw. Yeah, I don't know if they have some... Because in many tournaments when you play, you are not allowed to make draw before the move of 30. So, but they have made a repetition, yes. So if you have the same position three times, th then you are allowed to, to make a draw, yes. Mm. Yeah. So, so they, they, there was a draw. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a quick draw here. Mm. Okay, but I think we should go to board number two. And it's a game between Frode Urkedal and Nikita Meshkovs. Mm -hmm. And I am not sure if you have... Have you followed the game from the opening? No, I haven't no. seen the, the whole game. I haven't no. seen the whole game. Mm -hmm. I think that for the audience it would be good if we don't repeat everything. So, but we can go from the position that we last had here in the studio. Mm -hmm. And then we can go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, so... Um, this was the position that we had mm. last time, so it's a Bogo Indian. Mm, it defense. was a Bogo Indian. I thought it was a Queen's Indian, but, but okay, it's, it's similar, yes, with the pawn structure, yes. Mm. Yeah. Um, queen f6 was played. Oh, I'm just going to remove this. And also, I just wanted to show you that we have a chat here, uh, a Twitch chat, so people can ask us questions. Mm -hmm. So, once again, if you have any questions t uh, for Pia, then you should definitely ask them in the Twitch chat that we have, um, as we can always answer those questions. Or if you have any suggestions or anything you want to say, we're, we always keep looking um, the chat here. So, just so you know that. But yeah, 91 was played here to exchange mm. the bishop, mm. the light squared bishop. Have you played positions similar to this? As yes, I have played similar, but more, 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 more with white than, than with black. But yes, I have played similar position, yes. So it's, it's quite a some typical pawn structure with, okay, Fianchetto bishop for, for, for black, but also white uh, to, to also to get a good bishop. And in one moment there, th th it could be like you, you play 91 to change them. And, then, and now white is okay playing for to to break up with e4, I guess. Now and then we saw that what, what's happening. Yeah, and perhaps to put some pressure mm. on the e file, mm. um, which is what happened. E4 was played, mm. <coughs> and and now it's quite important uh, because if white could play here, white would go f4, and then it would be a little bit more difficult for for black to do something with the e pawn. It would be a backward pawn, so you would have more pressure. So I guess. I guess black played e5 here, yeah, before yeah. f4 was played. Because otherwise, you know, you will take and you will go d5, you have a Solana and e5. So e5 is what you, 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 you must react here. Uh, yeah. Probably, yeah. To prevent f4 from, from being played. Mm -hmm. Now, I, yeah, now I don't know if you can. Um, mm, okay, yes, yeah, so let's see what happened. Rook d e1 was played here. Yeah, it's logical. You put the rook on the on the E line, so you will control. But okay, if you take on D4, yeah, you have to take back with one on the rook, so. <laughs> yeah, so we can continue here. Um, Queen F7 was played to attack the C4 pawn. Um, let's see, yeah, so the C4 pawn needs to be defended. B3 was played? Mm. Yes, because uh, white doesn't want to 
you know, take an E5 because the knight on E5 mm. uh, <laughs> would be uh, would be very uh, would be fantastic. Yeah. They're threatening lots of things. So they did this was not not a not a choice. So B3 is logical. You defend the C4 pawn, and uh, then next you, you see what you will. Yeah, take. you keep yeah. the tension in the center, mm. and also you can see that Queen F7 also makes a lot of sense because Black probably wants to place the rook a rook on the E file. And then if the queen was not on f7, then um, the rook would be unprotected. Mm. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very logical. And then also, perhaps you have sometimes knight f6, perhaps also. So queen f7 was a very logical uh, move. Yeah, play. giving, as you said, the square for the knight as well. Mm. Very good. Rook a8 was played. And now f4. Now he played f4, yes. But it's not, yes, now it's not the same as... Um, it's not the same as before because if it's white to move again, you would take on e5 and go d5, but and then you play against the e5 pawn. But it's black, so black will of course to change his uh, his e5 pawn for for one of one of the pawns, and he uh, probably doesn't want to take on f4 because you take with the knight and the knight gets more, I guess the knight gets more active there, and yeah. you still keep two rooks on the e5, and the knight is going to d5, so. But so I guess, yeah, I guess he took um, yeah, maybe on d4. I'm just wondering, because if pawn takes mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. knight takes, is there something like this? Where does the knight go to prevent... Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, yeah, to this prevent uh, this uh, this queen f1. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a mate on f1. So this is not possible for for, for uh, white to play. So bl white probably uh, needs to take... Uh, you need to take with something... Uh, you need to take with something different here, yes. Yeah. So I guess, yes. Uh, but but maybe, yes, you, you can maybe just yes, simply take with the rook, perhaps, yes. Yeah. And then you can go back. Hmm. Um, hmm. But... Black played knight f6 mm. in this position. So, yeah, I guess the idea was to... One is that, okay, you for free you can... You, you put the knight on a more active square, on f6. Yeah. And then also, maybe white's plan was to go knight e3, knight e5. But now the knight on d5 will not do anything because you, you have the black knight on f6, so you can always exchange it. So I guess it was a way to, to put the knight more active and then after you decide if you want to take. You, you need to take uh, hmm. on uh, the on the to exchange the e5 pawn or go with one of these pawns. One of these pawns, yeah. because you cannot go if you go e4. This will probably e e weak pawn. So I yeah. I, 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 I assume he, he that he, he, he took after one. Hmm. And he did indeed. So here he took on d4. Hmm. He took on d4, which is what you said was normal. Queen hmm. takes d4, hmm. and there were some exchanges here. Hmm. A5. Yeah, a5 is just, uh, just uh, if when if white wants to take more space on the queen side, a3, b4, yeah, y th then you can just exchange once. And the pawn is on now. It's the pawn is also defended, so it will never be hanging there if you got the knight at c6 or b5. So it's just uh, it's normal. Uh, it's a normal move to, to and to gain some space on the queen side as mm, well. Th yes, where where black has majority. Mm -hmm. And then white played queen d3, and this is the position that we have right now in the game. Oh. Yeah, th this position looks to me very, to me very equal. Uh, that it shouldn't be so much more excitement, but but you never know. Yeah. So queen d3, I guess. I don't know. It looks. Okay. Maybe queen d3. Maybe it's a little bit of waiting move. They're waiting for rook a to change and then to go knight d3. And then, uh, so, yeah, and yeah, also now you can go knight e3 because after rook e8, the, the, the rook on e2 is defended by the queen. So it's a little bit uh, to not have any piece hanging. So well what would you say, uh, what would you say is the plan for, for each, for each side here, for both black and white? And I, I guess the plan for black was to go rook e8 and then Rook e8. Rook e8. Yes, yeah. I, I think that's logical. But it because white white keeps the control of this open file, and then maybe to change and then to play queen e4, so that you can afterwards maybe go up with your king and you can try to play um, 
against the pawns on the uh, queen Something side. Something like this. Y yes. So the, the change then to take with the queen and then to go oh. queen e4. The, the yeah, the and then to go queen e4. e4. And then after you can go king f7. And the only weakness black has is on c7, yes. While white has, okay, the pawn on a to, to defend. And uh, so this, I think, is the, pl uh, the plan uh, for, 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 for black. And, um, and so which knight would you say is better? Y yes, now uh, the, the knight on f6 is better because the knight on g2 is more passive. Yeah. And you need to, uh, so, so I think um, so, so knight f6 was a fine move no, to make it more active before you, you, you change the pawns in the center. So the, the knight on g g2 needs to, to get maybe, I don't know, to d5 something, to somewhere else, maybe to d5. Or, or perhaps to f5, d4, and to get to some other squares. But otherwise, knight f5 is logical. But it looks like general uh, equal uh, position, yes. Hmm. OK, so mm. perhaps this will not be a very tactical game. It will probably quite mm. a. This will be a, a, a slow game, yeah. Yeah, this slow this game. It will, will be a slow position. It depends a little bit the ambitious, uh, the ambition of the players. Now, if they will be more peaceful or if they will try to keep on playing this position. Hmm. Someone is asking if white should try to play for b4 in such position. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not... I, I don't. I'm not sure. Yes, well, you, you can absolutely go for b4, but like a3 uh, yeah, and b4. b4. But then maybe maybe this is what uh, uh, maybe this is what um, uh, black perhaps will wait for, and then to change and then go rook a8 to, to mm. keep the pieces. Because somehow when black didn't play rook a8 before, maybe black just want to to wait a little bit. Yeah, and see how mm. if white weakens his uh, position in yes. any way. Hmm. Because in general, when you have lots of position, this is a way of, of playing. You play with this minority uh, attack. You go a3, b4, and then you try to play c5. You play against uh, these pawns, okay. and then uh, to play yeah. the pawn on, on, and then try to keep a, to, to the create a weakness on on d6. So and to put the pawn rook on c c2. So of course, this is absolutely a normal plan. But then, if you do this, you will need to go some h3 king to have the king more safe hmm. somehow. But with the king on h2, if queen h5, then, then you always have to look for this knight g4 jump. Yeah, so, so, so um, actually. So, so uh, but okay, you can have then the knight on e3, so everything is defended. And actually, normally, a knight close to the king is a very good uh, defender. Okay, hmm. so this hmm. knight right here, it's passive, but at least it's defending the king. I, it, it could be, yes. yes, yes but not uh, perhaps it, now it's not so important. Yes, no, I thought more than when you go knight d3, oh and yeah. you go h3, king, h2. Yeah. But it's very good to have the rook on the second line. So, because when you play the f4, the king is more weakened, and with the rook on the second line, then you, you can put the king maybe on h2 afterwards, you know, after yeah. the h3. Mm. Okay. But this will probably be quite slow. Um, mm. Let's go to another game. Mm. I was thinking that we should go to board number four mm. to see the game between Norman Mises and Sergei Volkov. Mm. Um, and this looks quite interesting, as it looks like this bishop doesn't have so many pieces. To yeah, go you to. know, it, it looks like white's pieces are, you know, there are over. Uh, they, have, they have problems. Yeah, the bishop <laughs> doesn't have any square to go to. Uh, C7, but... Uh, yeah, it's, 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 it's not very... Let's see how the position got here. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, let's just... Yeah, just a few moves, because this is... I think we saw this. This is the last position that me and Ralph had before. Mm -hmm. And here, bishop b4 was played by black. Mm. Queen C2. Mm. The, mm. This is quite a normal plan uh, that um, um, that Black changed the knight on C3, and this is because now 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 White is threatening to take on F6, the pawn D5 handy. So this knight put a lot of pressure against D5. So you need to take it away, and he now actually bl White will have the bishop pair. But the the the, the, um, the knights have some good outposts, so the knight can come to E4. And so it's not no, no, not a, a problem that white has the bishop pair, at, at least not now, as the position is not too open. And mm. black is a pawn up in this position. 
And white black is a pawn up also. Yeah, in this position. Yeah, yeah. So, so. Seven against six. Mm, so this is, of course, yes, yes. And you can see this this bishop on e5. Yeah, it's because f4 is played. It doesn't really have so many good yeah. squares to Probably it wanted to threaten f6 to put pressure on d5. Mm. But uh, as we can see later in, in well, the position, mm. the current position, this bishop on e5 seems to have, have some problems. Mm. But let's see. Bishop takes c3 was played. B takes c3. Mm. Knight e4. Mm, it's very logical to defend the d5 pawn, and it's a fantastic square there for four. Should he have played bishop takes f6 here? Um, yes, this was probably, uh, th this was absolutely, uh, yeah, this was To prevent knight e4. Yeah, so why didn't he, di didn't he go down? Why didn't he do that? Okay, so he takes, yes. Queen takes. Probably. And you take, and you now he defends the pawn. No, no, now it's black to move. Black yeah, 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 but mm. it's this pawn is threatened. Mm. So I guess maybe a rook d8 or something, yes. Mm. Or maybe queen e6 possible also, but rook, d rook a d8 looks so, so normal. Now and then can you play rook b1? Yeah, this is a good move. And then, um, okay, you I guess you go rook d7, and after rook b5 you have to defend the pawn again. And so this seems now. Now maybe 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 queen e six something yeah. like this. And if you try to put more pressure, because now maybe the queen can come in. Rook yeah, what one. about f five here? Uh, yes, f five. Yes, f five. We will go. Uh, we will go check. Hmm? Check on e three. Mm, I guess so. You move the king, and okay, uh, cannot. Okay, yeah. Just have to be careful sometimes with queen e1. Yeah. yeah. Hmm, but but we it's fine here. Yes, it's fine. So, and now maybe... Um, yes, now maybe 97. Yes, this is maybe the way you have to play. But I, it looks very logical to take on f6. Hmm. Okay, I don't know. If yeah, because something like this. Because if you, uh, if, if you don't defend on d5, I will go bishop yeah. take d5 and the c4. So you, you, you need, this is the, this pawn is very, very important in yeah. the d5, so yeah. And it also protects c4, just like you just said. Mm, yes. But perhaps this is better than what happened in the game. Uh, this looks more, this looks, uh, it looks better to try to create some uh, counter play against d5 and rook b1. But after rook b1, rook b5, black always have, have this b6, but it's the d5 pawn that you will try to, to put pressure on. So uh, yeah. yeah. So even here, if b6, I mean, mm. you can still play. Mm. Maybe now 97. Maybe maybe this is okay. You can go 97 here, but then maybe here. Maybe now you can have uh, some plan like uh, okay. Now I don't know if knight f5 is maybe coming. So maybe should you control the e3 square? So what what did you say that was coming? Maybe knight f5 is coming 93 because. Uh, you see, oh, knight knight f5. f5, yeah, yeah. knight and f5, then, uh, yeah. So maybe, but you, you maybe you play some queen d2. I don't know. Some somehow to defend the e3 square, so you don't have to to worry about this. And after queen, but then maybe you can go e6, push me back, and b5. But maybe I a6. Go, uh, yes, but if you go a6, rook b2, b5, I go a4. I really have to play against this. Yeah, this pawn, and to put the other rook on b1. So Someone is asking if white could play now rook e1 uh, white to put some pressure. Yes, Wh white could play this could play file here. on yes. the e file and yeah. threaten the d5 pawn right now. Yes, but maybe yes. If you play here, I was just wondering what would be the um, yes rook e1, rook e5. It looks very very natural. Yes. The next one is rook e5, and it will be a good blocker there. And if you move the knight, the d5 will hang it. So this looks like very... Uh, this looks at least better than the game. This looks very, very fine. I don't know if there are some yeah. danger if you go knight e5, I take on e1 because you you are... Knight f5? If I go knight f5, yes. But, I but now, you know, uh, because I want to have activity along the e line. Yeah. Yes. So... But but anyway, I like this more than yeah. what I saw. Uh, Let's see what happened in the game. Hmm? Let's see. Yeah, but this seems like a very 
very reasonable alternative. Mm-hmm. Uh, that perhaps would have been even better. So, oh yes, yeah. So he didn't take on f6, but instead took back on c3. F6, rook takes B7. Yes. Now the problem is uh, after F6, you know he has no, th- he has no uh, uh, the, the the piece is trapped. <coughs> yeah, the piece is trapped here. Mm, it's trapped in the middle of the board. And this is a little bit, you know, when you have a uh, black squad bishop, you normally prefer to have your own pawns on white squares. So the bishop can play better. But it wasn't the case here. So I... Uh, is this losing now for white? It's losing for white. But white is trying to create some kind of compensation. He has got... Now he's equal pawn. Okay, he will get one more pawn. So he's trying to create something. But in general, it's it shouldn't be enough. So you take on e5, I assume he will take back on e5. Is uh, he wanting to take now on d5? No, no, no. If you take so on e5, he has to take back with the pawn. So now he has one pawn and he's going to take on e4 he, he, or d5. He has a pawn and he will... Okay. But but he, but he doesn't have it because now black has a pawn, is a pawn up. Yeah, but he got one on b7. So oh, he got the one on b7, mm, you're right. So yeah, But definitely. he will get maybe, I don't know, maybe two pawns, but it... it it, it hmm. will not be I- enough, I don't think so. Hmm. So it's, it's just a way to try to create something. For okay, so hmm. maybe this was B takes C3, maybe it was a blunder. I guess it was a blunder, yes, I guess. So. But also, I don't know how he lost the pawn in the beginning. Yeah, so, so, uh, yeah we went w- through that in the beginning of I the commentary. It, yeah. Mm, yeah, of course. So, so, uh, so he, he needed to take on was F6. At some point he took on C4, and hmm. then White just never got the C4 pawn back. Hmm. But sometimes we have this, you know, uh, Tony Miles always had his role, which I try to, to uh, tell everyone, but I forget it myself. Yeah. That when you make a move, and uh, wh- when the opponent, when you're uh, going to make a move, even if it's something obvious, you're exchanging something, it's always good to look at the position with new eyes. Yeah. And just to have this blunder check. This is what he did. Just uh, the last, uh, just one half minute for the blunder check to avoid any uh, big mistakes. Hmm. But even here, I mean, Okay, he cannot really save the bishop. Can he save the bishop somehow? That's the question. Is he there any good way to do so? He can save the bishop, but I don't see any good way no. to do it. This is the problem. Yeah. <laughs> because you can take on e4, but you can only take once, because after the bishop will be pinned if you take with the queen on e4. And then if you go f5, d5, you know... Wha- um, sorry, let's just... If you will oh, take first mm-hmm. on e4... Yeah, and now the threat is f6 again. And but this f6. Yes. So, so I mean, if you go f5, you just take twice on e5. If you go d5, you also take twice. Yeah. That's right. Let's uh, just. Okay. Mm. And if d5, then we also take uh, probably twice. twice. Or you take one time and then you take on the queen take d5. This is maybe the easiest. You take on e5 and queen take d5. This is probably the easiest. Oh, no, it's a rook on e1 flop. So d5, you take on e5 twice. Yes. Mm. So it's just th- this bishop is just. Uh, just became a big pawn in the m- center, in the middle. Mm, <laughs> a big pawn. Hmm. Okay, so... Uh, and you can see that black uh, is telling white that I have no hurry. I don't... Uh, I will put... I will defend everything and I take the bishop when I want. So it's a little bit cruel for, for white because he is saying that white cannot improve the position in the Can b- white take here and play this? Yes, th- this is what he can do. So I was, uh, yes, I'm a little bit, uh, this he can absolutely do. And then, so he will have to, t- now no, he doesn't win the, the, yes, I wonder why did he, why did, did he di- do this? <coughs> Why didn't he take the piece before? We just think this is better. He will, I guess, he go knight take e five and then pawn take and rook takes. So he doesn't win a piece, but he thinks his position will be so good then. He'll be, he'll be a pawn up then. But mm. just in this position, can we just see if we took the piece? Yes. Yes, you know, 
You're right. He will take with a deep pot. No, no, no. Take with a deep pot. <laughs> <Now you're laughs> I'm always trying. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you want to go. Yes. So this is why. Maybe it's right. Maybe he couldn't take the, the, the piece. Because now we threaten knight take e4, but we also threaten rook take d5. And yeah. So, so and Bishop takes e4. Uh, and also after rook take d5, the knight, this knight will be trapped. So, so After, sorry? Uh, after let's say black moved the queen somewhere just to get out of the pin. Yeah, but so let's just say he moves to queen to c7 or something. Yeah. Where do you want to go? Yeah, I guess you should you should be on the so you can go queen b6 later. Yeah, this is this is it. And now we take and now we can see that the knight on e4 is is actually uh, trapped. And even if you go queen b6 check, we have king f1 and everything is guarded. So the But then we can go here. Then we can go here and we to go. see five. Yes. That so maybe you should take with other rook. Maybe this is what you should have done. Maybe you should take on d5 with the other rook. Maybe here to take with, with this rook. Maybe this rook is better. With um, yes, to avoid queen b6 check. Yes. Rook. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if there are some. And now the knight is the knight is trapped. Yeah. So maybe this is what uh, white played uh, for all the time. But in this position, then here, mm. could here black take the bishop? That's uh, you take it here. Yes. Let's see what. But you see, there will be bishop take d5 check. So let's see. We take with the d pawn. Now we threaten to take on e4. We threaten to take on the d5. If queen c8, rook b5, we it's like the game. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, or not like the game, but uh, like we were looking at before. And now you go knight c5, and let's see what happened here. Uh, then you can perhaps take with the. Now you go bishop take d5 check and bishop take c6. Yeah. So so this is not. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, so there was compensation. It was still it's still complicated. It's still complicated. Yeah. So yeah. it's not that he's just losing a piece, but. <coughs> Um, no, it's, 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 it's much more deeper than that. So the conversation is that you get a lot of pawns in the center, you get your bishop on g2 to play, and you, yeah, the, the d5 will be weak. So, so it, it was, yeah, yeah I, I underestimated the white's uh, plan with bishop, to, stay, to let the bishop stay here in the center. Hmm. And now he's, it seems like black simply chose a uh, less complicated line mm. to win a pawn mm. and to keep being a pawn up. Mm. Mm. Um, and this is very typical, uh, you know, um, strong players that you, you don't play anything that you can give the opponent uh, count. You play what is the safest for you, what is the, uh, not, not to go into complication you don't have control of. So, so uh, I guess this is why he decided to play like this. But, but yeah. What mm. happens if bishop h3 here? If bishop h3... Um, can you... Yeah. There was someone who was asking this in the chat. Bishop h3, ma maybe can we kick the rook on a6? K bishop h3, can I go some... Aha, uh -huh, but I will take on c8, you take on b5. Yes, bishop h3, I go a6. No, 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 first white, white move. If yeah, 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 but I uh, have to. Uh, yeah. Sorry. Hmm? No, a6. And because if you take on c8, I will take on b5. Yeah. And then I will take the bishop, uh, is my plan. Oh. Yeah, and then this bishop is not really, mm. um, <coughs> it's not really um, hitting the knight on e4 either. Mm, uh, and then the knight on e4 has, a, has an escape to knight c5 because the rook is not on b5 to take away that square. So... So I guess the bishop... After takes and takes, you mean? Uh, after takes and takes, yeah. The knight on e4 will have an escape uh, via c5 there. Mm. Yeah. Okay. But this seems to be a very interesting game. Mm. Also, it's important to note that they are on move 21 and white only has three minutes left. They have only three minutes left. Both of these players are very... Uh, I think they're both very fighting players, which yeah. I like uh, with, with, with both of them. They normally... Um, play their games until the end, uh, are big fighters, we can see that one is uh, higher rated and also I think both of them has come to Rilton several times. Okay, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think, um, yeah, I've, I've seen them almost every year, I always see these players here in Rilton. Um, 
<coughs> and this is actually nice that players like it so much that they want to come back year after year. Mm. Yeah, okay. So it will be interesting to see what Mises decides to do. Once again, he has to play 20, uh, 20 moves before he gets his uh, 30 minutes, mm. his extra 30 minutes from the time control and move 40. Mm. So uh, this will very soon become <laughs> almost a blitz game for White. <laughs> yes, now this is of course, I it's, it's, very it's, it's not good to be under uh, such a time pressure because it's so easy to do, to, to not value the position right, to take the wrong decisions when you are pressed by, by time. But uh, it's only, only, in my opinion, recommended to, 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 be to get into time travel if you have a very bad position. Mm -hmm. This is the only way, yes, try to, to maybe uh, encourage the opponent to play quickly, to play yeah. on your time. But in general, uh, time is, is a big uh, and an important factor when you play chess, absolutely. Bishop takes e4 was played now. He, th he played bishop take e4, and yes, so... Yeah, so so he played this. Mm. Took, mm. and I guess yeah, I guess he will go for uh, d five here. Uh huh. Yes. D five. Mm. And then he probably wants to take. Yeah, because also it's important after d f yeah after d five yeah. Yeah, I it's important that uh, of course. D6 cannot be played, of course, because there are checks here. I asked once the d five. Can you go some? But the, you know the knight doesn't have any good square. Because the fight, then you go bishop d4. So he he took he took him. He didn't on e4. He didn't play d5. But this I f uh -huh, okay. Yes. Now his idea is if you take on e5, yes, you, you take back with the f pawn, yeah, and you play, and then you will have two pawns in the center hmm, to play with. And now if you try to, y of course, this knight is. No, what, what, sorry, what happens if f takes? Yes, you, you go f, you have to take f because the rook with the f pawn you take. Uh, you take with the f pawn, and now... Okay, um, so we can see that white has some central pawns, but mm. white is, is a piece down here. Mm. So, yeah, the plan for white is try to pick up, okay, to get the pawns to move, no? e6, d5, d6, and then the rook on d1 is, is, is good behind. And it's also very important to have the rook on, on the fifth line because otherwise black could have played knight to e5 or rook to e5 yeah. because the rook is hanging. But now if you try to kick the rook, there is a6, rook to 5 or rook to 5 So yeah, this, is, uh, this was uh, the most interesting way of playing. And white, I guess. Mm -hmm. would you say that white has enough compensation for the piece in this position? <laughs> I, I will need maybe a little more time <laughs> to, to, to make a... This from intuition. <laughs> if from in yes, now you know. I, I, I just now I think it looks. It doesn't look. Uh, it doesn't look bad because you threaten this e6 and d5, and you would like to have a blocker. You would like the knight to block on d5. If knight could be blocking on d5, black is of course very fine, but it's white who control this. So so yes, now this is. Uh, uh, this is coming. So I don't know what should we do. Maybe some. I don't know what can I, do? can I go queen e8 maybe can I go queen so if he but you don't have to take it you can maybe can play something here because now you don't um, uh, okay rook d y d yes so what to I don't really know yes what shall black do okay I can go a6 but you will just a6 and I guess you just go rook, rook c5. The rook is very good there, yeah. There is no. Hmm. You just keep the rook. Yeah, I have an idea. A6. Hmm? Where do you go? Do you play rook, rook c5? Uh, what happens here? Uh, if you go. But I, I take on I take on c8. Yeah? Yeah, and then, yeah. And then course. I take back. And then yeah. you take just take back. Uh, okay. Because I have. Uh, Sorry, I thought that. that I thought there was a pawn here and there was a knight yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, with a pawn and e4. But even then, because the queen was hanging. So yeah, mm. <coughs> but doesn't but work. But this is always very important to look for all the, the tactics, because uh, to always uh, have this uh, different tactics idea in, in mind, and because sometimes they work and sometimes they, they, they do not work. Mm. And sometimes they don't. Yes. Okay, mm. let's just see 
Yeah, so this is the position. Mm -hmm. This is the position right now, A which two. is what we thought. Ah, so this is what he played. And now, I guess, okay, if you go E6, I can... Ah, now we come to another game. Or no, this <laughs> is the same game. Ah, this is the game okay. opening. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the game. This is the uh, yeah, no, I should have seen it from the phone structure. So, <coughs> I... Yes, what, what is... Mm-hmm. Okay, this will be a very interesting game, mm -hmm. and it will be very, very nice to follow. Mm -hmm. um, before mm -hmm. Ralph com comes back to the studio, mm -hmm. um, you're going to have a m meet and greet with some woman, right, on the 9th of January, mm -hmm. um, before, before the Pro Chess League, mm -hmm. at s because the Pro Chess League starts at 6.30, mm -hmm. and you'll be commenting it together with Anders Grandel. Yes, that's yes. right. Yes, the Wasabis will be playing. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and if you have missed about the Pro Chess League or Pro Chess League and you don't know where it is, uh, some rounds before we had an interview with um, Danny Ranch where he explained a lot about the Pro Chess League and we talked about the Wasabis as well. But your role here uh, will be to, well, apart from commenting, of course, you'll have a meet and greet at five o'clock mm -hmm. in Times Hotel mm -hmm. on the 9th of January mm -hmm. for women, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, it's uh, any woman who, who likes chess, it doesn't matter if you play in clubs or whatever, or if you don't play, you play online or you, you just like chess, you're welcome. Women, girls, anyone. So it will be very nice to have this meeting. And Time Hotel is very close to Udenplan, so it's easy to go there with the metro. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is a metro station. And uh, so, yeah, once again, if any woman or any girl is interested in chess, doesn't matter the level, uh, mm -hmm. you're more than welcome to come on the 9th of January. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, to Time Hotel um, at 5 o'clock. And uh, you will have some some food served as well yeah i think we okay we'll have some coffee tea yeah, some, coffee some, uh, and tea. yeah some sweets but it will be nice to have a meeting and also to see that uh, there are lots of women also playing chess online and we really would like to to reach out to them to meet them and also maybe to show that what my passion is is to play chess on the board that this is also nice but but chess can be I believe so much in chess, in the positive aspects of chess, what you can yeah. do with it. So it will be very nice to have this meeting. I guess it will be the first time and it will be, uh, I, I guess it will be a continuation also. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Thank you. Thank you for telling us about this. Hopefully, uh, mm. hopefully you will want to come. Uh, if you're watching this and you're a girl who's interested in chess, hopefully you and yeah, are in Stockholm, of course, <laughs> you'll want to come then on the 9th of January. But thank you so much for coming here to the studio. Mm, it's really you. nice to mm. have you here. I was also very happy to be here. <laughs> and thank see you. some games and see what it is we have been doing here the past, uh, the past few days throughout the tournament. So very mm. soon, Ralph will be back in the studio. We'll take a very short break and we will continue analyzing the remaining games. Thank you.
Welcome back to the commentary of round seven of Wilton Cup. Ralph Arkeson, Grandmaster Ralph Arkeson, is now back in the studio. Yes, <coughs> now uh, um, uh, the um, the uh, the time trouble phase of the games is approaching, and uh, we can expect some uh, interesting uh, things to happen. Indeed. So we will go now to board number five. We were. Um, yeah, before we analyze the the games before that, so we will now go to board number five, as we haven't been here yeah. in a while. Between Jesper Thibault and Toivo Keinonen. Yes. So... Uh, Maybe we can go back to the position that we had um, earlier. Yeah, to understand what has been happening. So... Yeah, uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, so here... We saw when he played e5. Yes, right. Queen mm. a4, rook e8. Mm. Yeah, and I think we were somewhere here, rook ad1. Now he took on f3. Yeah, th this uh, position we had also. Okay. And e4 and the white uh, should take. And white gets the pawn back and he has some advantage. Uh, Thanks to the bishop against yeah. the knight. Oh yeah, knight f6 was the move that we... And now I w wondered whether white should play uh, maybe queen b7 or maybe queen f3. And white played queen f3. Mm -hmm. Which looked natural as well to defend the d1. Yeah, now there's work. a threat of uh, bishop e7. Yeah, this nice, mm. this nice little threat right here as the rook is hanging on a8. So rook c8 was played. Yeah, that's the simple way to defend. And bishop b4, yes. I think uh, white is aiming to put his, his bishop on c3, where it's very active and ha has a fantastic uh, square. Yeah, and also blocking any entrance yeah, from uh, the yes, rook. Yes, uh, from uh, an offensive and also a defensive uh, point of view. Yeah. An excellent position for the bishop on c3. Yeah. So bishop c3, just like you said. Queen e4. Yeah, now black uh, wants uh, an exchange of uh, queens, obviously. And I don't think white should take himself because uh, that would um, uh, make... Uh, Th th that would make the black knight active, so rather a move like uh, king g2. Yeah. Also, if then uh, black takes on f3 and king takes, the king is preventing the knight from getting to e4. Yes, and, getting this and nice uh, in, uh, now it's um, um, more or less an end game, and uh, the king is a strong piece in the ending. Yeah. So king g2 was played. Queen takes f3, king takes f3, king f8. So now the black king is also yes, trying but, uh, to... Yes, but white is better. Th the question is <coughs> if it's enough for a win. White can, can take on f6, of course, giving black a double pawn. But um, that itself is not sufficient for a win. So white needs to create some uh, additional uh, threats uh, somehow. Yeah. Uh, yes, what did he play? He has to find some entrance here. Yes, he tries to kick the knight away and then he can play rook d7 afterwards. That seems G4. like a very logical plan. Yeah. So h6 was played. Yes, and then probably h4. Yeah, G5. with the idea to play g5. And g5 is clearly very annoying. L let's see, g go back. Uh, imagine that bla black plays some other move here. Uh, for instance, if he plays h5. h5? Yes, yeah. and white plays g5 and knight e8 yeah just and to show this and then rook d7 
fantastic rook on the seventh rank. Very good rook without entering here without having to exchange yes, the bishop. And now there's actually an important uh, tactical trick I think because black can't play rook c7 which he would like to do normally because white plays bishop b4 check and then rook d8 winning the knight. Yeah. So that's quite important here. Very important here. Definitely. So this line uh, really shows uh, the difficulties that black faces. Yeah, I mean, black would almost have to play a or something, but then the b6 pawn yes. or a6, but then these pawns would be very, very weak. Indeed. Uh, and here white is uh, very much better. So bla black uh, should try to find something else. So he played rook c4. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, what is this doing to prevent? Uh, okay, to is it is the idea to play knight? At a the moment, he is uh, threatening the g4 pawn, but uh, I guess the idea is also to be able to play an active knight move afterwards. If g5, then white can pr uh, black can take and then probably play knight e4 like that. Yeah, that's a strong move, uh, threatening uh, both the c3 and uh, the pawn on g5. Yeah, so we can see then the idea with rook c4. So instead black played here rook d8. Yes, mm -hmm. that seems logical. King e7, and here he wanted to play rook a8, yes. giving this g4 pawn, but of course attacking the a pawn. Yes, and... Um, with uh, somewhat more uh, unbalanced pawns, uh, the the advantage of the bishop versus uh, the knight can uh, be even exaggerated. Hmm. A five. Yes. Rook a seven. Mm. King e eight. Rook b seven. Yes. So he's going after the queen side pawns. Yes, uh, and black uh, can't defend them easily because after knight d7, the pawn on g7 is hanging. Yeah. And if he plays a uh, move like rook c6, then I suppose white will play g5 or perhaps uh, bishop d4 is also possible. One of one of those moves, and yeah, once again, I suppose that if knight here, of course, yes. on G seven is hanging, so this knight is a bit stuck. Black is in uh, on F six in trouble here. So H five sure. was played. Yes. And here, let's just see what happens if G five. Um, maybe Black wants to return to D seven protecting b6 and uh, if white takes on g7 black can take on h4 which yeah. is uh, probably okay for black so if we take here then rook takes h4 yes and there is this square so well white rook. should actually try to find something something better here yeah and one thing if he takes or it wouldn't be so good to take on b6 no, because then, then pawn takes. Yes. Uh, and yes, so th then uh, what is uh, in some trouble actually. Yeah. yeah. But uh, let's see what, what. He took on h5. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that seems lo logical uh, actually. And wha uh, black took on h4. Uh, some more moves have been played. Rook takes b6. Mm hmm. Rook takes h5. Rook, Rook a6. Yes, now black cannot defend the a5 pawn, I, I, I believe. Rook f5 check. 
So he's trying to get some counterplay here. <coughs> okay, uh, threatening f2 and threatening the bishop. So now, of course, uh, rook takes a5 is impossible because of knight c3. Losing the rook. Yes. No. And uh, yes, that seems like a good move. Uh, however, can white take on g7 now? Mm. Is that possible? No? Then rook takes f2. Then king e3. E? Oh yeah, of course, because if king d3, then there is this uh, knight c5 check. Winning the... Black the can still defend by f5, but uh, white takes on a5. And this position should be technically winning because of the queenside pawns. Yeah, these two queenside pass pawns are very strong. Yes, yes. Uh, but he decided to play bishop e1 and defend mm -hmm. the f2 pawn. Yeah, that that's um, that's a highly sensible way. He just defends, and he sees that uh, black can't protect the a5 pawn, so that will uh, fall anyway. So now he cannot stop. Rook takes a5. No. And then, of course, he will not lose the f2 pawn neither. Yes, I think uh, that white has a winning position here. And yeah, no time problems. The white has six minutes for mm. two moves, and yes. black also has a couple minutes for the last two moves before the time control at move 40. So oh, oh, can he play? Uh, he can try rook e5. Yeah, he yes. did that. I was just wondering. Oh yeah, of course. Because if a move, if a move like rook takes a5, then is there this knight c3 yes, check? Uh, uh, yeah, that that's uh, the trick. Yeah, very nice. Winning winning the rook because it's both yeah. a check from the knight. Yes, it's a double rook. check. Yes. So so white sensibly m moved uh, his king away. So so now we basically have the same situation where black can't defend the pawn. Yeah. And is it now the time for black to take the pawn? Uh, yeah, what can take the a5 pawn uh, for sure. Uh, I think so at least. Yeah, what's uh, what's the problem? Ma many black mm. moves are uh, are bad now because white has rook e5 check. Yeah, of course this is a threat. Uh, this is a threat. Is right this uh, the actual position? The actual position is this. Yes. So rook takes a5. Yes. Seems very natural, but uh, uh, Jesper seems to be wanting to make a move soon. He's holding his Bla hand Bla up. Black can play knight d2 of course yeah but then going take into a rook ending but, but uh, th this uh, must be winning for white also uh, th this is winning uh, no no yeah, doubt two queen side pawns are mm -hmm. very strong and this mm -hmm. f pawn is stopping yes. it's blocking these two mm -hmm. king side pawns so sorry this is the position right now Mm. So, yes. Okay, let's uh, see the next game. Should we see the game between Milton Panzer and Tiger Tiger Hill or Person? Mm -hmm. Um. So, is this the position? Feels like it should have played many more moves. Yeah. So this is, I believe, this is the position we had. Yeah, when uh, we left, I think. When yes. we left, and C five was played. Mm hmm. Uh, let's see. Uh, go back, please. Um, C5. Th that's uh, the logical uh, breakthrough for white. And there are some tactical uh, possibilities. After C5, black may take and take on E4, but then white takes on B7, and it looks uh, highly promising for white, doesn't it? This pawn is hanging on c5. Oh, yes, oh, oh, uh, that's right. Uh, that's right. 
Uh, yes. But perhaps this move could be played with the threat of rook c1. Mm -hmm. And then as the knight is hanging and then... But uh, the material is uh, very much reduced now. So with equal pawns one might get the c6, c7 pawn. Uh, the game is getting closer to a draw, I would say. Let's say knight f5, uh, rook c1, and then... Uh, rook c1, knight... Uh, oh yeah, knight f5, rook c1. Yes. question is if there is... Or does the queen go to d6? Yes. But then could there be some problems here? Yeah, maybe black... Uh, white still has some initiative here. Um, uh, let's see... Yeah. Or bishop c8, white has to play rook a7 and then knight d4. Yeah. Anyway, this is very uh, a knight d4. Anyway, this is very far away from the game. Yeah. Yes. So we should probably go back to mm -hmm. the game, as uh, Black didn't take on c5, but of course that was no. Uh, well, I guess uh, that was an option. Yeah. Rook a8 was played. Yeah, white uh, threatened c6. By the way. Um. So yeah. Exactly. That's so why the rook had to be protected. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, c takes d, c takes d, queen c1, mm -hmm. knight g4, yes, yeah, I guess uh, the black knight has to return to d7 sooner or later, but... Uh, Perhaps something like this. Mm. But at the, the moment uh, the pawn on b7 is threatened, isn't it? This knight has been quite bad on h6. Yeah, yes. It hasn't really <coughs> had much no. to do there. But, okay, so now it's on its way back. Bishop b5, okay. <coughs> yeah, of course, cannot be taken because the queen is hanging. So, rook a2. Okay, so he played this keeping the initiative instead of taking the b7 pawn. Yes, uh, and um, yes, black uh, can't take on e4 because of, uh, because of the bishop. So he is still uh, a bit annoyed by the pin. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. Rook c8 is possible, but then white will take the b7 pawn. King g7 was played. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a sensible move. h3. Yeah, also sensible. Wh white creates some uh, space for the king. Yeah, and yeah, it takes away some, some squares as well for yes. the bishop and knight. Rook a7, protecting the b7 pawn. Mm -hmm. And now he took on d7. Yes, maybe uh, he almost had to. Uh, otherwise, black could consider b6, I think. Yeah. Uh, threatening the queen, and afterwards uh, he could take the e4 pawn. Yeah. Which uh, is important. So, and he took with the knight. Here, is it because if he takes with the queen, then queen takes? Yes, takes or, or maybe it's uh, more, uh, more or less a psychological decision. He wants to keep the queen in order to, uh, to make uh, the game more complicated. Hmm. Yeah. And also, once again, perhaps to threaten some b6 at some point, mm. maybe. Queen c8. Yes, b5. 
Yes, B5. That gives black the opportunity to play knight b6 and afterwards knight c4. Hmm. Which would be a good square for the knight. But okay, rook c7 seems logical and then knight b6. Okay. Little tactical move here. Yes. Threatening. Well, yeah. But white needs to take the queen. Yes. Otherwise, the rook is hanging. Yes, Th that is a way so to force uh, the exchange of yeah. queens. So simplifying a bit the position. And now we have this end game right here. Yes, and um, it looks fairly equal, I would yeah. say. So uh, the normal uh, guess would be a draw in this game. Let's see, because they have played quite a few moves after this yeah, so well it has uh, the c file but okay now now black protects all the uh, the entrance squares on the c file yeah yeah he does right now so the white rook cannot really enter to any good square in this moment as no. you can see that many squares are taken what could still try to improve the position of the knight that is possible f6 yeah preventing knight g5 and then can black can play some sensible moves uh, with the king king uh, perhaps f7 e8 d7 yep something like this mm. so king f1 he's now activating yes his king oh and his knight Okay, it goes back. I guess he had some alternatives for the knight, but... Um, He's trying to put some pressure on this Yes, pawn. maybe he wants to play knight e2 and c3. Yes, that is possible. Uh, and... Um, and um, yes. Rook a4. Mm -hmm. uh, what should uh, defend the pawn, uh, I guess? Rook, Rook b1. f5. Yeah, finally, black plays f5, the normal king's Indian. In the endgame? <laughs> yeah, <Yes>. uh, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked in the beginning if h5 and f5 would be played, and you said that later in the game, but yeah, yes. that later was move 32. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, considerably <laughs> later. Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, this is a bit unpleasant for white, because if he takes the d5 pawn, will be very weak. Yeah, so if he takes here, this pawn will be very weak on d5. Yes. So he probably has to defend the pawn by f3. Yeah, which is what he played. f takes e4, f takes e4, knight g8. Yes, now black tries to regroup his knight to f6, hitting e4, and he also has a nice square on g4 later on. So now the ending becomes quite sharp, actually, because I think both players may be able to attack the opponent's king. It was a rather sharp uh, decision to exchange on e4, because both players get good squares for the knights. Yeah. Wha white may, may go to f3 and g5 also. Yeah, which is actually what happened in the game. Mm -hmm. So he'll play knight f3. I'm wondering what would happen here if he played this idea with knight e2. Um, yes, that is possible. With the threat of knight c3. Talking. But maybe black would start with uh, rook a3. So yeah, so maybe he would start with And then this. knight f6. Yeah. <coughs> Yeah, makes a lot well, of sense. Well, I, I would prefer to put the knight on g5 uh, with white. Yeah, which is what Milton did. Mm -hmm. So, knight g5, king e7, and rook b3. Okay. 
Uh, yes, now the white rook is ready for action. It can go to... Uh, yeah, there are plenty of interesting squares on the third rank. Uh, C3, F3 or sometimes G3. And uh, he can also start uh, by improving his king. Uh, put the king on f3 perhaps so that the, the pawn is safely protected and yeah. the e4 pawn is safely protected and this pawn is also yes now if, if the rook moves mm -hmm. but let's see what was played because i think it's several moves yeah so many moves have been played yes knight g4 was played here mm -hmm. Rook c3, sacrificing a pawn. Oh, th that, that's a critical decision. Is it correct? Yeah. Um, okay, can you move back? Uh, move back one move. Uh, uh, yes. Let's see here. So very critical to sacrifice this b4 pawn yes. uh, for white. So question is if it's... Ma maybe normal yeah. move would be for white to put the king uh, in a somewhat safer place. Such as to play king e2? Yes, I think so. Isn't that possible? And where would you, if you could put your king in any place of the board, where, where would you put it? right now well uh, it's not completely safe anywhere perhaps <laughs> but uh, yeah but um, I don't like the king on the first rank but maybe uh, on g3 uh, yeah maybe could it be safe there but then of course it's not really protecting any pawns but no. at least it's a bit safe yes And rook f3 uh, would be interesting uh, normally, but now it's impossible due to knight h2. Uh, it's probably be probably equal, but but it's uh, rather s sharp uh, when both the players have their knights in good positions. Yeah. So actually both players can uh, take av advantage of their opponent's kings here. Yeah. Rook c3, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I mean he sacrifices one pawn. Which could become dangerous. The yes. The, the b pawn could become very dangerous. And this was move 38. I suppose that they both had some sort of time trouble. Mm -hmm. Um, we weren't following live exactly when this happened, but I suppose that they did have mm -hmm. time trouble. Uh, it's a critical decision. Very uh, critical. I'm, I'm not sure that it's correct. Let's see what happened mm -hmm. and we can... Uh, yeah, now, now, of course, black can't play king f6 because of uh, mate. Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, white even has two mating moves. Uh, also, this knight h7. Yeah. Oi. He can choose how, to, how to do it. Knight h7 after king f6. But uh, of course, black has to play something else. And uh, what did he play? King, king e8. Yes, that looks That's sensible. where he went. Rook g7. So, okay, so he's trying to get this pawn, but I'm just wondering. Okay. Because this pawn could become dangerous yes. in the future. Well, I'm not uh, absolutely sure that I like the white play here, but um, um, yes, uh, should black play? He has some options. He can check on b1 or he can play rook b2 and then push the pawn. And push the pawn. Or of course he can play knight f6 and then take on e4 but 
that will transpose to a rook ending which is maybe heading towards a draw. Well, black will be pawn up I think, but uh, white should have drawing chances. Question is if it was necessary to enter such position, because it didn't really seem necessary. No, uh, I'm before. not sure what uh, black uh, would have played if white uh, had defended um, slowly. With the king, perhaps. Yes. Moving. I'm not sure. Uh, yes, is uh, this uh, the actual position? No, let's let's move. So knight f6 was played. Okay. So it transposed to this end game. Yes. That you were talking about, and this is the final position where black is a pawn up but of course white can win a pawn now I suppose with check yes so uh, should white take that pawn that is another question okay <laughs> 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 yeah it seems normal to take the pawn I think so <coughs> unless uh, there is some uh, some real uh, problem afterwards, but uh, yeah, no, it seems normal to take the pawn. But but uh, the one thing I check here, here, do you go up here? Yes, uh, that's possible. Uh, that that seems uh, quite good. Uh, let's see, rook g5. And the black can push b4, maybe. And what will happen? What what has to stop the pawn with this king? So king e2. Yes. Okay, now this pawn is protected as well on g2. So you can see that the king is on time right now. But the question is how this end game is. If I, I think it should be close to a draw, actually. And if black would play now, uh, I this wonder move? when black played uh, when black played um, knight f6 could have played something sharper. We can go back, but can I just ask you about? Yeah, wh this white will take on h5, I suppose. And this is. Yes. Uh, let's see. Yes, maybe. Um, yeah, I was just wondering. How yeah, yes. If this gave any chances for black. As but maybe you can yeah. just play, uh, well, uh, one move is uh, rook h6 to get the move, uh, rook uh, behind the pawn. But maybe you can also play rook h3 and black plays rook b4 and white returns with this rook to b1. To, to h1 and oh. <laughs> uh, yes and yes. then um, then white can come up with this king to d3 uh, isn't that quite safe i think it is yeah okay let's go uh should we see what the position looks like right now or do you yeah. want to go back to knight f6 yeah may maybe we can take a short that that was his uh, 40th move by the way yeah so maybe it was in severe time trouble then. here Yes. Black's or 40th move. Or, or before that move. Rook g7 was the did last move. Did they have any other options? And once again, I do read the chat. Um, and you can ask things about the positions of the games.
Yes, um, of or course. if you have any question for Ralph or any other suggestion, you can you can uh, you can write it there. So I do read the chat. Uh, I would like to play something with the rook. Um, let's see what to play. Um. Yeah. <coughs> so, but, but this okay, is um, right now. yeah, ma maybe it's uh, maybe it's uh, rather simple for white. White will take uh, the g6 pawn, and later on he can play rook g7 and rook b7 to to get the the rook behind Black's past pawn. Yeah. yeah, let's just see what has. <coughs> Ah, so this is the position right now. Yes. So we were looking at uh, King D6 and this whole... Yes. Uh, it's heading <coughs> towards the draw, I would guess. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so you, you would think that this would be a draw mm. and then a draw. Okay. Yes. So <coughs> we have some interesting games here. We do have a result. We didn't really look at the game. But uh, VS Ratham well, uh, drew um, won. Sorry, against Eric Blomqvist uh -huh. on board number nine. So Eric Blomqvist. Yeah, that lost. that's interesting. Ma maybe we can look uh, earlier in the game. Yeah, and then I was thinking if we just should go back to some of the games that we were looking at before. Yeah, m uh, maybe there are critical positions. We we can look at the positions. Yeah, we we can go through them later when mm. we have some more time because this was the very interesting game between Norman Smithes and uh, Sergey Volkov. Yes. Where. Um, where uh, yeah, you white you, you discussed it with Pia. Yeah, discussed it with uh, with my mother before or with Pia, <laughs> and um, was looked very interesting here, yes. especially because Mrs. had very was very short on time, so all of these moves that we will see now were made in time trouble. But mm -hmm. Mrs. Yeah, is probably good at time trouble, so yes, we solved yes. this. Well, but has two pawns, which is normally not sufficient for a piece. But but um, he has these pawns in the center, and they may become uh, very strong. Yeah. I mean, of course, this is different from Kuloid's game, but he there he also had two pawns for the piece. But he was dominating the whole game. Yes, so it's a bit different. But um, rook d six. Knight a7, trying to get to b5, probably. Yes. So he took on a6. Yeah, that's the third pawn, but now black gets active, I suppose. Activates his, his knight mm. quite a lot. So rook c1, protecting c3, king h8. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yes, interesting. Knight c7. Yeah, th this looks uh, quite uh, alright for white. He has uh, three pawns at the moment, and uh, three th rather strong pawns, and uh, the black c4 pawn is weak also. Yeah. So th this uh, indeed looks satisfactory for white. Some pieces were exchanged here. Yes, here I see one small trick. D5 is bad, I suppose. Because black would play knight g5. I guess. And then afterwards, he can take uh, on e5 with the rook. This is a threat as we have this knight f3 yes. uh, check and fork. Yes, so d5 is a blunder, of course, but it has to play something else. h4 was played to stop yeah, this knight g5. Now, now uh, white is able to play d5. Yes. Yeah. So, knight c7. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let, let's see here. If uh, if he plays the d5 now, uh, what would happen? I was thinking if a move such as queen here could be played. 
Yes. Okay, there is a... We need to look at this as well, but I was just... Because I was thinking that the queen cannot really protect this. Uh, protect both pawns at the same... These two pawns and the g3 pawn at the same time. Black may also... Yeah, queen h3 uh, looks... Uh, Logical, uh, I think. But I'm not sure. Ba yeah. Black can also consider the strange move queen a8, I think. Hmm, of course, pinning yes. the pawn. So can and it then uh, rook d1 is necessary for white to keep the pawns. And then uh, probably can rook d7. Rook d7. So here he will win the pawn. Yeah. Black wins uh, the important d5 pawn. Yeah. And uh, it's quite important to keep this pawn. Yes. I suppose because if I mean something like this, we just take the pawn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, the knight is covering. Yes. The e8 square. Yes, that that is probably winning for black. So Okay, so H four. Yes. Knight C seven. Rook F one. Queen D eight. Yeah, now black is uh, ready to block uh, with the knight D five. Create a big blockade here. Yes, yeah, so th that's an excellent square for the knight. Yeah. <coughs> A five. But uh, what still has uh, three pawns, which makes it uh, more or less equal uh, materially. Yeah, this is the thing. It's not only these pawns that black needs to take care of, but also this a5 pawn could create some problems. Mm -hmm. And we will see if it did. Knight d5, like you said, blocking, or blocking the central pawns, rook f3. Yes. Sorry, what yeah is happening? Here? Yeah, I can't take on a5 because uh, rook f8. Mate. Yes. Yes. So he needs to take the pawn with the rook. Yeah. Right. Okay, so. C2, okay. And I suppose that this would be very dangerous to give white three passed pawns. Yes. In the center. So black should try to keep the c4 pawn. Which he did with mm. queen c8. Yes. Queen f1. Mm -hmm. Rook f8 threat. King g8 perhaps. And yes, now white was able to defend the a5 pawn, but black has, um, has a good coordination now uh, and a splendid knight, of course. So now it looks quite nice for black. Yeah. Yeah. That's. Queen c6. It feels like the black like black's pieces are getting mm. quite active now here. Yes, and, and uh, there could be some hidden threats against uh, the rook on f3. Yeah, there might be tactical chances for black. Queen a3, rook a8. Mm. Once again, mm. this f8. Um, this f8 square needs to be defended, so there are many moves that are threatening different things. Both yes. players need to b take care of everything. Yes. And I can imagine that this could have been maybe not difficult, but as m Mises had was very short on time, um, Sergei Volkov probably, w or no, the other way around, <laughs> but uh, sorry, Mises was trying to get, to create small threats so mm. that time would pass as well. Yes. And uh, he would get some moves in. King h2, this was the 40th move, and h5. Yes. Yes, h5 is, um, is strong probably because um, eventually the knight will find uh, 
uh, good square on G4 w with uh, serious attacking chances. Yeah. M maybe his next move will be knight f6. Knight f6. Yeah, nice. threatening the rook and uh, also mm, with the idea knight g4. And I think that suddenly black can go for a kingside attack. Yeah. Queen d6. So here he's offering an exchange Aha. of queens, which could be quite critical. But uh, let's see. Uh, okay, he has a rook f5 afterwards hitting the the h5 pawn. But is that ma maybe he was uh, a bit short of alternatives here because the position could be a, a bit difficult for black. Yes, what else? If what would move his uh, rook, black could play uh, knight e3, I guess. If, uh, yeah. So where does the rook go? To f2 or something? Or? Yes, but the knight e3. And, and once again, black this has serious, really serious uh, chances. h5 was a very, very nice move. Yeah, yes. This little pawn move yeah, yes. to really control the g4 square and creating his own attack. Mm -hmm. um, and not only defending with a piece up, but yeah, attacking. Yes. So this is quite bad for white, I suppose. So queen d6 was played. Queen takes d6, e takes d6. Now he took on a5. Mm -hmm. Could another option have been to play rook d8 or is that? Yes, maybe. <coughs> There was someone in the chat who, who asked. That's why also yes. I thought we, we could analyze it. Uh, rook f5, is that possible? Just think of take. Yeah. Um. So the c3 pawn is hanging as well. Yes. Uh, white can take on h5 and uh, and then rooks. No, no, th then black can defend rook takes d4. Well, then what the, the white a pawn walks. So that will be dangerous for black. If rook c4, c5, sorry? Yes. Take and a6? Yes. <coughs> now the pawn will be very dangerous, uh, I suppose. Can <coughs> A7, rook b5. Yeah. Even, I mean, you could also take a queen and and, mm. and check and then you lose the piece. <coughs> so probably like black has to watch, um, watch uh, the pawn and... Uh, yep. Well, black took on a5 instead. Yes. Which looks very logical. But the pr probably the position is winning for black because I think it will end with the position where black has one pawn on the king's side and uh, knight and pawn against the two pawns on the king's side, which should be winning normally. So let's see what has happened. Rook a8, rook f5. Knight f6. So he simply wants to uh, to get rid of to get rid of this d7 pawn, of course. Yes. If he takes on c3, then knight c5, a uh, rook c5 is uh, dangerous, isn't it? Yeah. So he will lose this pawn and. Well, uh, what threatens rook c8? And which is a much bigger threat, <laughs> of mm. course. Mm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, knight f6. Yes. Important. Rook c5 anyway, and I suppose he needs to take on d7 now to stop this yes. c8 threat. <coughs> Is this where they're at now? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. so many things have happened. Many things have happened. So knight takes d7, rook takes c4. 
Now he's got these two plus pawns. Yes, but I think it's winning for black. He has to be a bit careful, but normally he should win. Yeah. He should uh, be able to block the pawns or create uh, counterattack against uh, the white king. Yeah, which is quite weak. Yes. Here. But rook a2. King g1. Yeah, if uh, white plays king a2 3, uh, the king can get in into immediate uh, trouble because black will play uh, knight f6 and knight g4. Oh, and knight g4, yeah. Mm. Uh, and that would mm. be very bad for white. Yeah. So he needs to go to g1, knight f6. Yeah. Rook c8. This looks winning for black. I don't think the white pawns are that dangerous. Because they are so, so well far it's back. It's difficult uh, to advance them without, without losing them. Yeah. C4. Trying to advance them, rook c2, c5. Mm. Have any more moves? Oh, the game ended. It looks like. Yes, we can see here in the live that the game seems to have ended. Oh, okay. So we will. Uh, black one. Was uh, this the final position? Or yeah, this was the final position. Yes. So now what loses the d4 pawn and uh, yeah, th then it simply has just one pawn for the piece uh, and uh, the game <coughs> the game is hopeless. Yeah, no counterplay then. So was was c5 a mistake or was it just that there wasn't really? Well, you can't play d5 yeah, because anyway because black okay. just takes. So, just wondering. Uh, and uh, I mean, for instance, if white would, I don't know, go somewhere here. I think one possibility for black would be king f5. He can give the g g7 pawn, but uh, he, he will, uh, it's sufficient for him to win anyway. If, uh, if white takes on g7, black takes on c4 and uh, the d4 pawn will fall and uh, black will win eventually yeah okay now i was looking at variations like this this but i suppose i just play here so my idea was that if knight takes then there's this check and then you yeah okay you have to watch out a bit uh, so uh, but i suppose I just avoid the, the last Rook d4 is good, isn't it? Isn't this, sorry, what happens here? King e4. Ah, okay, yeah. And there isn't really... There isn't really anything. Yeah, okay. Okay. Anyway, mm -hmm. um... <coughs> Okay, let's go Black to the won next game. game. Sh do you want to? Should we go to this number two? We haven't yes. seen it in a while. Okay. Between Frodo Urquidal and Nikita Meshkovs. So. Uh, yeah, it was uh, a rather equal position. Yeah, I think. we thought a while ago that it would be rather equal. That that was rather equal, and that it would be quite a slow game. Yeah. We thought. But but actually, what? Uh, had to split his uh, queenside pawns. Was uh, it before? I don't really like that for white. D did you have to do it? Let's see what happened. Yeah, I analyzed this before when Pia was here in the studio as well. But A4. A4. So. Did you have to take it? Maybe there is some uh, problems if black can play a3 and uh, uh, he can get some tactical threats perhaps but uh, it's 
it's not the standard uh, move for white to, to take on A4. No. Yeah. Sorry, I think we need to take a break here. Yes, okay. There is someone coming to the studio, mm -hmm. so we have an immediate interview, but this is very interesting. We, we should continue looking at this game now after, after the little break, after we have the interview. Yeah, okay. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you're right, perhaps A3 was, was a threat. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. I, I don't like uh, take o taking on A4, but uh, if uh, white really had to do it, then uh, okay. Then A4 for black was quite strong. Yes, uh, and in that case, uh, white probably made uh, some mistake earlier. Yeah. Okay, so we'll be back very soon with an interview. And uh, yeah, thank you very much. See you soon. Mm, see you. Welcome back to the studio. Uh, we have a special guest right now, Sergei Volkov, mm. who just won against uh, Norman Smisis. We were following the whole game live, and now you'll be here to tell us about what you were thinking throughout the game and show it to us. Okay. So thank you very much for being here with us. Hello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's start. Okay. Yes. Uh, my opponent uh, play uh always uh, c c4 i am had preparing so you had this prepared uh, yes as black but uh, continue uh, this position is not uh, meet uh, my opponent but yeah. in my game uh, no, not good move you got this very nice center already in the opening Yes, yes, this position is uh, uh, structure mm, si similar uh, French, French, <laughs> but uh, a little, a little, little. Reversed? Yes, mm, yeah, yes, fr yes. Fr okay. <laughs> Castle, and now you took on C4. Yes, yes. Is, this, uh, is this theory? Is this theoretical? I told uh, uh, knight uh, knight uh, h3 not a good move. Yes, this uh. Uh, possible plan, but not good move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, white have white have uh, sharp position, but uh, black bet, but 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 a chance. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. H6. F3. Yes. E takes F3. 
Well, interesting to take a uh, rook. F3. Ah, to take with the rook here? Yes, yes. Mm, but uh, black good position. <laughs> yeah. Because because difficult uh, white uh, continue uh, white create uh, threats. Difficult for white to create mm, threats. Yes, yes, yes. Hmm. Yes. I need a long time for this. Yeah, he needs a long time mm -hmm. to do so. Okay, so e takes, e takes, and um, bishop e7, <coughs> mm. queen e2. Possible take a pawn. I s I, I think uh, if no 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 no. Ah, before I can I can can see I, I think if uh, uh, see this position computer I think computer take but not I not want it. You <laughs> didn't want to take. No. Yes, yes. Because he but gets a lot of development? Because uh, initiative white, uh, but need concrete uh, decide problem. Yeah. So white gets a lot of initiative after bishop bishop e3? Maybe, maybe knight, uh, knight f2. Knight f2, okay, interesting. Ah. Yes. Knight. To activate this knight. Not, not give uh, d, d3, uh, play, place d3 need control. Exactly, yeah, because if after bishop e3, uh, black has queen d3. Mm. Yeah. Let's see, but you played castle instead, rook d1, uh, protecting d4. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, possible not uh, other move, but uh, if can uh, can save, save pawn, I decide this is right. Yeah. Knight f4, mm -hmm. bishop d5 was mm. threatening the bishop, um, and now he took on d5. Can you take? Yes, yes. Yes. All right. Bishop f4, knight c6, and okay, now you're a pawn up. Do you think there's enough compensation for white? I think not full compensation. No. Because, because one one week uh, weakness at black uh, d5 uh, <laughs> but uh, f for one pound not not no enough not no so and just, just my opponent play uh, initiative i uh, i know about this he play usually uh, similar yeah. Here. I don't, don't know, know. Maybe, maybe, if computer see, maybe <laughs> have other plans. I, I, sh I, s I have. I had uh, queen a five, for example. Uh, in this position. No, queen no, 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 this uh, before, before. Ah, here. Yes, maybe. Queen and uh, rook uh, d d h. This plan. Yes, but not sure <laughs> what is better. Yeah. Uh, white have initiative, but uh, I think I play so uh, right. Yeah, and here we have a question: Should white have played bishop takes f six, or was it? Right to take uh, on c3. Uh, back a uh, little position. Uh, I uh, look at look at um, f3 maybe. F c4 played before. Ah, see before. Uh, f3. Before? No, no, no. no. Ah, to take for on c3 For white, for white, for white. Uh, f3. Queen f3. Ah, queen f3. Sorry. Yes, and yes. take take. Take here. And take uh, f. No 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 no, no 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 no. Ah, take yes, yes. on f six. Okay. This this uh, interesting. I don't know. I uh, look at more this position and pre prepare. I think play play white must play maybe so. Ah, uh, the white should I play in this way perhaps then. Then queen takes. Yes, yes, and, and uh, B, 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 C. yeah, mm -mm. Mm. 
Yeah, now the queen is on f3 uh, instead of I c2. I look at uh, uh, rook d, d um, rook b1, b6, rook b5, yes. and the knight uh, e, e7. Yes, and I have to move uh, a6. Yeah, this is uh, yes, yes. Uh, important. Yes, very important, and yeah. you're protecting here. But uh, yes, 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 uh, yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, A six. Yes. 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 Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um. Maybe B B B two then. Yes. A rook B two. Uh. Sorry, I'm going to see if I can. Maybe, maybe have compensation, right? Yes, uh, I see this position more more chance. Maybe b b five, b b four. Let's see. B five, b four. Yes, yes. If if uh, if uh, rook a two, b four. If yeah, okay. Um, sharp position. Yeah. But uh, rook stand. <laughs> yeah. So this was a uh, this was uh, another idea to play queen f three uh -huh. here. Okay, but he played queen c two instead. Mm, yes, uh, right. Uh, play. Play. Ready, ready. Oh, sorry. Uh, ready, ready. Um. Ready. Lost uh, rook. Well, lost uh, bishop. Yeah, um, so yeah, and this queen should be better on f3 attacking the c5 pawn than on c2 perhaps. Mm, yes, yes. Yes. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, mm -hmm. Knight e4. Rook I think uh, this position must uh, lost the right, but uh, very sharp. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if computer uh, show computer and don't, don't uh, show I played the uh, best yeah yeah because this looked very very sharp uh, in this moment after f6 and um, this becomes now very sharp after rook takes b7 rook e7 but uh, have many many other lines for example for example take 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 with f or e? No, 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 no. E, e4. No, 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 no. Uh, bishop uh, take. Ah, e bishop e takes e4, yes. 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 Take. D, e. Queen, c, c, h. Uh, rook, d7. And this rook? Yes, yes, this rook. And e rook e e so and uh, uh, queen d1 maybe but i'm not sure but uh, i'm not uh, <laughs> ready to play this position not not yeah. don't know maybe maybe win but yeah not sure complicated yes So you played rook e7 instead? Yes, yes. Rook b5. Again, need c, 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 it is. Rook c8. Yeah. <coughs> and Mises was very low on time in this position. Yes, as well. yes, yes. yes. You had a lot more time here. <coughs> But difficult, difficult. Oh, we continue. Yeah. Uh, continue oh, a six. Oh, stop one. Uh, yeah. I, I little, little, uh, little tell about this position. Yeah. Positions I think uh, win, but uh, black, black have not harmony. Harmony, harmony. Has no uh, harmony. Yes, there is yeah. harmony because uh, night night stand not good. Stand um, 
D5, but not possible. <laughs> yeah. But I, I did in my game this, but... Uh, yeah, you managed to put yes, the knight yes, on D5. Yes, yes, but uh, not sure I played best. Uh, but not not uh, sure this maybe maybe better king e4 uh, king no 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 ah queen h h4 h h8 king, king h8, h8. No, maybe maybe yes not sure yes maybe uh, a preventive preventive yeah. move yes prophylactic prophylactic yes but yes okay should we see a6 uh -huh. rook d5 uh -huh. queen e8 rook uh -huh. d6 knight a7 now but uh, i'm not sure maybe maybe can stand uh, maybe uh, again king i'm not, not sure king uh, white white have year year four move this is uh, triad Yeah, 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 six, 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 six. Mm. Yeah. White have. Ah. White have because uh, I, I, I tell because I played this move. Yes. Yeah. Mm, black uh, lost pawn. Yes. I'm not sure. What would what would have been an alternative for you in this position instead of uh, knight a seven? What would you I have played instead? I told. Uh, white have e four. <coughs> ah. Uh, oh, e six. E six. G six. E six. White have threat. E six. Yeah, yeah. White has the threat. G six. Okay, let's continue. Rook takes a six. Knight b five. Rook c1, king h8. So now yes, came this king yes, h8. Yes, 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 right. e4, knight uh -huh. c7, rook c6, knight e6. Again, uh, knight stand not good, but uh, have uh, triad g5. Yeah. g5 and uh, maybe um, triads for king, yes. Yeah, it could be some problems for the king indeed. Rook takes e8, queen takes, and mm -hmm. yeah, of course here we were saying that this move is not possible because knight yes, g5, yes. and mm -hmm. then you had this. Not perhaps. not uh, important this, but if if g5 uh, stand uh, knight, uh, very many threats. Yeah, has many threats from g5. H4, knight c7, yes. rook f1, queen d8. Uh, control d d5. Yeah, control. Important. Not possible f move d5 because have check uh, b6. Yes. Yes, indeed. So, a5. Knight d5. Now, finally, you have your knight yes, in yes, this yes, good yes. square. Knight come position, I think, uh, win. But Rook f3. Rook a7. Queen e2, queen c8, protecting c4. Yeah, important preventive move, but not uh, lost, lost, uh, maybe triads for king. Yes, so. King f1, mm. important, king g8, it's f8. Threat, queen a1. Queen a1, uh, not can good place for <laughs> queen. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> doesn't look good here, no. Yes, yes, but, <laughs> but hard uh, to protect uh, this pawn. For, for example, uh, stand uh, e4, uh, but come... G4? Uh, no, no, no. Queen, before stand uh, uh. e4. A uh, place, place. But come, come... E1, A1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I told about. Not good. No, no, no. Queen A1 doesn't. It's not in a good position there. No. Yes, I think m maybe have the other moves, but see how good stand uh, pieces pieces black. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're standing very good now. Yes. 
A minus is it. Queen A3. Mm -hmm. Rook A8. King H2. H5. Very nice with this G4. Yes, uh, I have the triads. Uh, knight, uh, knight F6 and yes. G, G, G4. Yes. Yes, and then mm, from there it can go to G4. Yes, yes, and uh, uh, first first line very bad and many triads. Yeah, yeah, the king is very weak. Yes, yes. Yes. And maybe uh, in king uh, black uh, get more places if uh, check, uh, for example. Yeah. And now queen... Uh, uh, how play white, I don't know. Yeah, it's difficult to see what white could do in yes, this position. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but this, this should be winning, yes? Yes, yes, because uh, uh, in Linus, uh, king, king, uh, king limit for se mm. second, second... Uh, the second uh, rank. Uh, the second file, yes. Yes. <coughs> yes, yes, yes. D7, rook A8. Rook f5, knight f6, rook c5, and yeah, now you can take the d7 pawn. Yes, and this is what you were saying, that the mm, second yes, rank is... Yes, if uh, mate, mate, uh, if h3, mate... Yes, mm, have this knight f6 and knight g4. Yes, yes. yes. So, um, knight f6, rook c8, king f7. Paul, not uh, <laughs> go, yeah. but uh, only only if uh, black mistake, because as uh, limit king uh, not possible. Exactly, the king yes, cannot uh, yes, yes, yes. help push the pawns. Yes. Rook c7, king g6. Oh. Yeah, c4, now rook c2, yes. and now the pawns cannot yes, be pushed. Uh, bishop uh, back, back pawn, yes, and not possible d5. Yes. Yeah, because if uh, rook, rook c6 uh, very long, <laughs> yeah. king, king go, yes, yes, and to maybe g4. Ah, yeah, um, like it's yeah, yes, it's really bad uh, for white. Yes. Yes, yes. yes, so c5 and well, mm. this uh, and the pawn is just yes. lost here. Yeah, okay, this is a very nice game. Okay. One question, how uh, many times have you played Rilton Cup? How many? Uh, first, first time I played uh, 20, 20, 20, 20, four, four years. 24 years. Yes, I played uh, 20. Wow. Uh, uh, maybe I don't. Uh, maybe you know. I I won uh, gold medal. Yes. Yes. Do yes. You know? yes, yes. Yes. First yes. place. Not gold. I mean, think uh, oh, gold medal, Rilton Cup. Ah, for for having so many years yes. playing. Okay, and how many years do you need for that? Uh, how many? I I w was. First place, first place split, split, uh, first place uh, single. Mm. Uh, this is important. Uh, second place, second place, and uh, uh, third place split uh, four, third and sec second place. Wow, so many. Uh, uh, ten, ten points. Wow. <laughs> Ten points uh, together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, that's that's uh, very impressive. This this need uh, ten points. Yeah. Rules rules. Yeah, yeah. You need to, to yes, get the gold yes, medal. Okay. Wow, so yeah. that's very impressive. Yeah. So good luck now the last two rounds, and uh, yeah, thank you once again very much for coming here and showing us your game. Okay. Very so nice. Very okay. Good okay. luck. Okay. Thank you. Right, we'll be back very soon uh, with more commentating after a short break. Thank you.
Welcome back to the commentary where we once again have Grandmaster Ralph Arkeson mm -hmm. with us in the studio. Yes, and yes. now many games have been decided by this point, but uh, let's look at one of those games that were decided a bit earlier and then we can follow up with following some of the last few games on the top 10 boards. Yes. So let's look at this board number three, which was played between Luis Ernesto Quesada Perez and Dimitri Colors, uh, and just see how it ended this game. So this is quite early. Yeah, uh, well, uh, we, we can go back to the last position th that we had. W we had a position after the opening. It was an early queen exchange. And uh, I said that uh, maybe we white could counter on a minimal advantage uh, thanks to its bishops, but it looked yes. Uh, wait, uh, wait. Uh, actually, bl black has a rather nice tactical point here. So uh, let's see. Go back a bit. Um, Yes, I, I think uh, somewhere around here, I think White was a bit trapped actually. So maybe already here he should play Bishop F4 instead of Bishop H4. Yes. Or, or well, he could also deviate on the next move, but, but um, uh, Bishop H4 is okay probably. F6. And then king e2 is a mistake, probably. So I suggest that he should play. Uh, what is the threat right now of black? Yes, uh, y you will see well what the, the threat yeah. is. But actually, the easiest uh, way for white to avoid it would have been to play bishop f4 earlier. In this position to play bishop f4. Yes. Uh, and then he could easily play h3 and uh, return with the bishop to h2 if necessary. Yeah, but let's see, so bishop h4, f6, king e2. Uh, and uh, now uh, black had a nice uh, tactical idea or tactical strategical idea. Carlos is a strong player, of course, so he, he finds something which you uh, wouldn't normally expect in a position like this. Yeah. G yeah, G5, uh, wait. Uh, Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah n normally white would play bishop g3, but then h5, threatening h4 to trap the bishop. And, um, and um, well, if white moves uh, the h pawn uh, one or two squares, uh, h3, h4, then black could take on g3 um, and oh, ca can you actually Should I do the moves? Okay, h3 yeah, or yes. h4? Oh, it doesn't matter, h3 maybe. And uh, th now this was forced and uh, th this is certainly a weakening of the white pawn structure and quite important because now uh, black is clearly better I would say. Uh, and actually he couldn't avoid that. After h5, hmm. uh, he was in serious trouble and um, king d3, as he played in the game, is also not very good. Can you just explain why it's uh, so bad for the white pawns to have this structure? Um, I mean something like this. Why is it so bad to have these three uh, yes. kingside pawns in an endgame? The the double pawn is quite ugly. Imagine that black plays king e7 now, simply, and uh, uh, yeah, the white pawn structure really looks ugly. The g3 pawn should be on f2. So now maybe it's a threat for black to play g4 and then take on d4 giving white an isolated pawn. Yeah. Yeah. So y you should really want to avoid uh, such pawns. But uh, here it was a force to accept them. Yeah. But he so he played king d3 instead. Yes, and that's probably a mistake because now black had a nice idea. 
Of course, he hopes that Blackbird simply return with this knight, knight d6, and then white can play bishop g3 uh, and uh, without any problems. Yeah, and then bish uh, bishop g3, and then oh sorry, then there isn't this knight takes g3 later. Yeah, uh, yes, if and no, no problem play. with if black plays h5. White is also always in time to play h3 and uh, return with the bishop. But this but is very nice. C4 is a fantastic move. Because if you take here, it's mate. Yes. yes. In the middle of the board. Yes, in the middle of the board. So, out of nothing, more or less, black suddenly creates very fundamental tactical threats. So now, white is forced to lose a piece. Yeah. So do you think that he missed the C4 after king d3? Um... Yeah, maybe he missed something, uh, or maybe he missed... Well, this is actually even worse than uh, bishop g3, h5, so uh, this is worse, and I of would say that... Of course, Yeah, I, I would say that he missed, he, uh, he overlooked c4. Because now he just lost a piece here. Yes, and he gets two pawns, but it's uh, definitely not uh, sufficient. And it's just a few moves more, I think. Yeah. As A4 is probably a bad move uh, also, but, but it doesn't really matter. It's but simply <laughs> lost. Yeah, but na position. now black can play knight B4 and rook C2, uh, and it's a uh, disaster for white. Yeah, complete disaster here. Mm. This position is not holdable no, for, no. for white. Okay, but this c4 move was very nice. Yes, and um, from the start uh, the ending looked uh, very very innocent and uh, you would never expect a player to win uh, quickly th from that position. Yeah. No, very, tac very nice tactical motive there. Mm -hmm. And actually this game between that was just being played, it's okay that we go there. Uh, between Jesper Tiba and Toiva Kainan and just ended in a draw. Oh, surprising. Surprising. I, uh, I was just sure that what would win that game. Just a few minutes ago. So if we just go through the last few moves. Yes. We don't have to go through all the way from where we were, but we, were we had a position like this approximately before. Yeah, it looks like a very big advantage for white. And if we just quickly see... Uh, here, for instance, uh, I guess it would be possible for white simply to exchange rooks. Wouldn't and it? how would that be? Uh, I guess it's a win. Um, I mean, uh, you don't have to do it, but, but uh, I think yeah. it's uh, possible. Let's say bishop d2, knight e6, king e3, and uh, yeah. Can and you even play here b4? Yeah, yes, th that's possible also. To stop the knight from coming to c5 after king 3 Yes. Maybe there is. Wh what has to watch out a little bit because uh, the square a8 is uh, a white square. So there could be some tactics where black. Um, tries to sacrifice his knight and get uh, white's remaining pawns, white's b and f pawn. Hmm. But uh, I don't think that is likely to happen. But wha white kept his rook and that should be acceptable also. Of course you cannot take on g5 because there is this knight mm. g h3. Check. <coughs> King e6. Yeah, well, no, normally you like to exchange uh, just to um, reduce the opponent's uh, counterplay. Uh. To exchange the rooks? Yes, uh, I mean, uh, in general, to exchange when you're uh, ahead in material, um, just to make the game simpler. A5. 
Yeah, maybe now it gets a bit critical because yeah, now it gets critical because uh, white is perhaps short of squares for his bishop. Well, uh, this doesn't look uh, completely good from uh, the white perspective. I would have liked to play something differently here. Hmm. So where did it go wrong? Um, well, wha one idea would be to exchange uh, the rooks, of yeah. course. Um, but here's a sacrifice to peace. Th this could be a draw. Yes, yeah, uh, uh, now it definitely looks like a draw. The rook endgame. Yes, so, so uh, go back a bit. Um, let's see, k king d6, let's see here. Um, bishop e5, then king c5 and king b4 and black will attack the white pawns. So that is not completely satisfactory. Um, yes, wh why it has some uh, problems now due to due to the black threat to play rook b4. Or, or can I play? Let's see. Um, can I play rook c8 here? Rook c8 with mm. which idea? Um, the first idea is to to prevent uh, rook b4. Yeah, of course, because there is a. Okay. Bishop c5? Yes. Well, okay, it gives uh, an exchange of rooks, but uh, I think it's a good exchange for white. Okay, so then maybe the exchange could have been done before. Yes, uh, and if black can't play rook c4, then, then what else could he play here? If he can't play rook b4, yeah. Otherwise, maybe white can simply push his pawn. His a5 pawn. Yes. And this uh, should be winning. Oh, really? Yes. Oh. Yeah, w well, uh, white is a pawn up, uh, and uh, normally you expect such positions to be winning. Yeah. So perhaps a5 here was an inaccuracy. Yes, because after rook b4, what can white do? If rook d8, black will play king e6. Uh, I guess. Or mayb yeah. maybe king c6 also, but, but okay. But <coughs> yeah, so let's. Black see. will have some troubles. Wh white will have some troubles here. To to be able to. Uh, so but what did he play? He played a six here. Yes. Yeah, now it looks uh, like a draw. Definitely. Someone was saying here in this position after, uh, no, so in this position, no, sorry, someone was saying something like this, king e6, but perhaps king c6, but, or a6 first, no, rook d8, king e6, and now a6, but I mean this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after rook takes d4, of course, after a7, you can just protect the a8. So this should... Yes, or, or, well, in that case, maybe king c6 was uh, the correct move for black. Yeah, but this should probably not work. Yeah, and this should just be... And this is how it ends there. 
Oh, uh, yes, okay. Well, uh, I'm sure that what was uh, winning. Earlier, uh, if yeah. you moves earlier, it definitely looked like a winning But position. perhaps he should have exchanged the rooks. Yeah, that was one idea, b but uh, I'm sure there were other ideas also. Okay, but this game ended at least in a draw. Should we see the last game, how it's going? The uh, last game that is being played from the top 10 boards. Yes. We never really went through this game, but this was the game between Chandra Prasa Dulipala Bala and Sergei Yonov. Yes, it yeah, it's not finished, but uh, it definitely yeah. looks like a draw. Opposite yeah. colored bishop, uh, bishops and white does just one pawn. Should be a draw, right? Yes. Not way to proceed. So if uh, white plays uh, king d6 at some moment, uh, then uh, black can just play um, bishop b5 and b bishop c6. Yes, no, king f7, perhaps. King f7? Actually, uh, what, sorry, can I just ask here? What happens if white plays, I don't know, something such as this now? Bishop, oh, okay, uh, okay. The uh. side cannot move the bishop because of but the b bishop uh, c2 sorry bishop c2 yeah bishop c2 then i wanted to go here yes but maybe but you have bishop a4 then. but then, then bishop a4 but ma maybe yeah. actually white could try b5 at that moment here yes so, so perhaps uh, black should play a waiting move with the king, king e7. Um, wait, let me, let's just let, let's just see how the position is. Um. Uh, yeah, this is the position, yeah. so now it's just a dead draw. Yes, it is a draw. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Are there any other games we, we should... We can uh, see the game uh, of Eric Blomqvist. I mean, he lost again, so uh, he is not in perfect mood now. But, but uh, th there were some uh, nice tactical ideas. And, yeah. uh, and uh, I think Blomqvist deserved a better result than what happened. Let's see what happened in the game. Mm. So how far back do you want to go? Well, we haven't seen anything of this game, so we can go to the beginning, but uh, make it rather quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's a Sicilian defense and uh, the Rich de Rouser variation. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I'm just going through this quite quickly, but uh, because we didn't look at this yes. before, B5, yeah. Yes, I'm not uh, completely aware of the theory here, but um, it has been played quite a lot. H4, H5, quite quickly, yes, by the way. Yes. Uh, well, um, uh, I'm not so familiar with, uh, with the theory. Yeah. But uh, go further. Th there will be some nice tactics here. And B4, I it's a typical idea. Black wants to create chances on the queen side. And g5, I'm not sure, maybe the white player, the white Indian guy overlooked the tactical uh, thing here, possibly. But uh, it's also possible that he has some difficulties to improve his position. Yeah. And that one is uh, the first point. I, I like uh, the move. Yeah, wow, okay, so here we see any uh, tactic, <coughs> a tactic here, yes. so... White has to take it, of course. Yeah, and bishop takes g5. Yes. This is very nice. Oh, okay, there is... Uh, the idea, of course, is that if white takes on g5... There is this, queen yes. takes e4, threatening both the rook. Yes. And check, taking yes. this rook right here. Yes. 
so uh, so this is it's not the winning me immediately but it's very good for black and bishop b g2 yeah white takes on c2 and then on e2 yeah. uh, i suppose yeah but this was very nice yes but, but uh, let's see what happened white took on d6 instead so did not take the bishop on g5 but now black has a nice pair of bishops but uh, maybe bishop a4 is uh, not uh, the best move uh, i think eric is about to overlook uh, one important uh, tactical thing knight uh, d4 if you move later well, well, well you can go back uh, a bit here he can uh, for instance play um, well i guess a simple move would be queen uh, c7 either forcing the exchange of queens when black has a fantastic ending uh, due to his two bishops mm. or white has to return uh, to queen uh, queen d3 but that's a very passive move could there be moves like this then no wh white takes with a check sorry white takes with a check yes <laughs> yes it's been a long day <laughs> yes but uh, here black is clearly better uh, yeah. due to his bishops so we what happened was a bit unfortunate but, but uh, we, we can see it what had uh, quite a nice tactical idea bishop takes CG. yes uh, that's a critical move of course it's not correct i mean here he should play perhaps uh, maybe bishop e7 or uh, yeah, something like that or could he take the pawn on e4? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask if this was possible. Maybe that uh, would have been possible, maybe. Then perhaps bishop d3? Yes. Uh, yes, queen f4 perhaps. Yeah. So something like this, perhaps. And then c maybe queen b6, uh, queen c7, and uh, black returns. But um, he has a big advantage, I think. Yeah. But here, bishop takes c2 was played. Yeah. Actually, I, I guess that uh, Blomqvist thought he had trapped the opponent, but actually had uh, overlooked a very important move. Which we will see now. Mm -hmm. So knight takes c2, rook d8. Yeah, that that seems uh, winning, but uh, white has uh, one move here. And yeah, of course, because it seems like there is this pin, but this bishop a6. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure Blomqvist must have overlooked that move. And what is Okay, so the idea is that if the queen moves, for example, the queen would take the pawn or something, then there is this check, right? Yes, yes. And it's hard to... Yeah. Hard to prevent mm. this check. Bla Black has no move uh, all of a sudden. He's lost. Wow. Just like this. Yes. So I it was indeed uh, an unfortunate Oh, this sequence. bishop a6. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He certainly overlooked the move. Yeah, because he sacrificed here this mm. piece on c2. Wow. So a few moves before that, he was uh, clearly better, I think. Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe we don't have to. Well okay, he does have some pawns. White wi disappears up, and uh, yeah. he should win uh, with the normal play. Yeah. Is there any other game we should look at? We can see the finish of the game uh, pal uh, Panzer against uh, Tiger Hiller. Oh yeah, it became a draw. We were looking at this game quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So this would be nice too. Yes, I, expe I expected a draw here. But we can see exactly what happened. Yeah, so we were looking at a position like this. Mm. Yes, the white two pawns each and the white king is in time to stop the b-pawn 
Yeah, very important. And someone is asking what the result of the game Urkidal versus Meshkov was. As it says here that it yeah, was a yeah, draw. Uh, bl black one, uh, it's a mistake. But it's a mistake. Mm -hmm. Black one, so Nikita mm -hmm. Meshkov's mm -hmm. uh, one. Yes. 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 <coughs> so. Yes, uh, well, it's a standard draw. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This is how it ended in a draw. This game. Yes. Should we see a bit of this Urkidal versus Meshkovs? Yes, we how can. We can look at it. Ended. I expected the game to end in a draw. Uh, I had to say, but uh, but. Of course, Urkedal had to play long game yesterday, so oh maybe he was a bit tired. Let's go back a few. Okay, we don't need to go back all the way, perhaps, but. But uh, the one thing uh, which uh, surprised me a bit was uh, when White uh, ah, yeah. took on A4. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, this is what we were looking at. Yes, yes, and he allowed his pawns to be split. Which was perhaps enough for Black to, to yes, uh, win the same uh, game. I, I certainly didn't like that sequence. Yeah. C5. G4. Yeah, wha when he played C5, uh, then. Uh, he certainly expects to play uh, d5 or d5 later. Yeah, because otherwise these two pawns are yes. backward pawns mm -hmm. and uh, they are fixed there. So queen uh, King f1. Yeah, n uh, knight b1 was a big threat, I think. So what yeah. you had to protect against that. This was a big threat. But yeah, now the black ki king becomes very active. Does he need to take here or can he try to create some sort of passed pawn? Maybe it doesn't really... Uh, well, uh, if so. black wants to win the game, he should uh, use the king. And uh, uh, I think he needs some uh, open space yeah. to, to enter with the king. Okay. Oh, and I get he got b5. Yes. Yeah, the black queenside pawns look uh, look uh, fantastic at the moment. Yeah. And the king and is very active. Yeah, as and well an active now. king, yes. Yeah. B black has a very big positional advantage here. Maybe it's too early to say that uh, the game is uh, really winning, but... Um, no, this king has problems as well. He cannot go here because of this check. Yes. So where should it go? Aha, uh -huh, he offers an exchange of knights. So if he takes, I guess that black will win the pawn ending. Uh, king takes, and uh, let's see, let's see here. Uh, Should I play g5? Mm. Yes, so a little bit of calculation here in this position, as it is, uh, has to be very, very precise. Yes, uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, maybe G5, what happens? So let's just look at this. So what do you want to do? Because if you play King B3, F5. O or maybe, um, maybe just uh, King D... Can the king go back? Take yes, these pawns uh, and yes, uh, I think I want to 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 stop the 
king side pawns uh, and keep the extra pawn on the queen side but <laughs> yes, okay, play king d5. Let's see what happens. King d5 or not king d4? Uh, king d4, okay. And white plays f5 probably. No here? Yes, or may maybe, uh, maybe you can exchange also. No here. Yes. White, white has concept. to try f6 here. Take and take. Uh, yeah, this uh, this has to be winning. Yes. Mm. Okay, we don't need uh, to. And um, yeah, wi white could try something differently, but but um, but but it was winning. I'm sure. Yeah. So. Uh, White cannot take on c4 then, no. so knight b1 has to be played to protect the a3 pawn. Yeah, but uh, knight c4 was a good move uh, in that case, because I it uh, forced white to make a very passive move. Yeah, and this knight is much better as well mm. than this. Knight on b1, so king d4. Now the white knight has no moves. White is trying to get some passed pawn here. Yeah, I well black was uh, threatening king e4, I suppose. And if uh, white plays king f3, black can plays king d3, king c2. When, sorry? In I this mean position? Yes. If king f3? Yes. Ah, yeah, so then king, king d3. Uh, and otherwise, king e4 is a threat. Yeah. So. And this knight doesn't have any squares. No. Wow. No, it's a hopeless position for white. No, he just... Yeah. Yeah, and resign here. This pawn will go yeah, down. Or uh, some pawn <laughs> will promote yes, at least. Yes. It was a bit unexpected. Uh, can I see the moment wh when white... Uh, made the, that critical decision with his queenside pawns. Yeah, to take on a4. Yes, it was... B takes a4 here. Yes. Uh, here. I mean, th this position still looks quite equal, doesn't it? Yeah. And then a4. And why did white take? Normally it doesn't look natural to take because it makes these two pawns quite weak on the queen side. But mm. the question is if white had to take on a4. Mm. So um, He can consider b4 or he may just um, do nothing at the moment. Yeah, what about b4 here? Mm. That is a question that uh, hmm. yes. Yeah, someone said queen e4 here. Yeah, th I was thinking about th that move. It's yeah. possible to uh, go for an exchange of queens. As these pawns could be quite Let's weak, say that right? white uh, white has to exchange probably and then white plays a3. And if knight c3, you want to play knight d2. Yes, yes. But now... Maybe move like c5. And then uh, fixing this pawn? Yes, and later on perhaps king e6. And d5? I'm not sure about b5. So what should play for a draw here, but, but um, 
so in principle what should try to exchange I, I think if what takes on c5 yeah um Yeah, the Black King is indeed quite active. Yes. Can become active very quickly as well. Well, uh, this is not completely obvious, but but uh, I thought maybe like that. And white plays something, and the Black goes here, threatening Knight B1. Yeah. And White has to to defend like that and I thought that maybe the black king would be very active here. Yeah. He can play d5 and uh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, and become quite dangerous. He will get the past uh, c pawn, which can really become dangerous. But uh, well, uh, I um, uh, somehow uh, it seems anyway that that uh, around here wha what uh, made some mistake. So he, he can also play some qu more quiet move here, uh, I suppose. Uh, let's see. Can if White just doesn't do anything, yes. just a passive move. Not passive, but Ma just maybe the maybe G four. G four? Yeah, that's what someone said in the chat. G four. Then can black play something like this? Uh, no. No. That's a bad move. What's oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> <laughs> I mm. can feel like uh, that we've been here for <laughs> <laughs> five hours. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I wanted to take <laughs> and have this threat, but of course this mm. thing. Uh, this e5 square is, uh, of course, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yes. <coughs> I wonder, could a3 be, be a possibility? Uh, yeah, I mean, a pawn on a square like that uh, can be um, used for uh, tactical purposes. I I'm not sure if it's a good move, but, but it, it may be a good one. A3? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, we don't have to analyze this. I it's difficult, B but uh, uh, yeah, I'm I, um, yeah, I, I think th that the position looked quite equal uh, around here, and suddenly black was a lot better. Yeah. So the idea of placing this pawn a3 is to sometime be able to play queen b2, or yeah, uh, yes. Uh, or maybe queen e4 and exchange queens and then knight c3 uh, and white would be very passive. Yeah. All right. Mm. I it was a bit surprising, the ending here. Uh, I, I certainly expected a draw. Yeah, from this whole, um, mm. well, long, long, many, posi or for a long time, the position looked quite equal. Mm. So, uh, is there any other game you would like to see? Uh, let's see. Let's just... Yeah. <coughs> uh, what was this? This ended... Uh, I went through this with Pia before. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so it we saw that it ended quite quickly in a draw. And this... Th yeah, they made some repetition here. Yeah, we, we looked at this as well, actually, but... Uh, it's a bit strange uh, that, <laughs> that uh, th they went for a repetition. Yeah, because this here, I mean... I, it looks like uh, a typical fighting position where both players have chances. This was not forced in any way to go back to C8, right? Uh, no, no. But of course, m maybe um, Kaido Kilauts was happy with the draw. That's black here. But... 
But normally, wh white would ex be expected to try uh, something uh, sharper, perhaps. I mean, rook c8. Uh, I mean, I suppose that white can... Uh, he can play move like uh, queen b1, perhaps. And... Uh, Is he afraid of c4? Is uh, that a possibility? No, uh, I'm, uh, I'm very doubtful about that. <coughs> yeah, <coughs> at least it feels like it didn't have to end in a draw. No. In that in that position. I I think that uh, w with considering the structure, uh, wh why it should be. Uh, Slightly better, only slightly, but, yeah. but uh, a little. Okay, I think that with this we can conclude yeah, most well of the day. That was uh, the last game, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. Okay. So, Ralph, it's been okay. very nice to have you here these two days. Yes. Uh, hopefully, you've enjoyed your first commentary. Yes, like uh, this. Uh, it has been a pleasure to be here. Uh, and. Um, even though I couldn't play the Real Cup this year, I've uh, still had some um, some uh, nice uh, memories of the tournament. Yeah. Uh, thanks to this. Yeah, that's mm. that's r that's really good. And also when we when we do this, we really go in depth in some games. So it almost feels like we're playing a bit as well. Yes. Well, so uh, w we certainly learn a lot uh, ourselves. Definitely. Uh, so uh, it's good for. <laughs> all of us <laughs> good for all of us to do this yeah well thank you very much for being here today mm -hmm. tomorrow uh, we'll have a new guest who will be Ferd Grandmaster Ferdinand Hellers and and he will come here to the studio to um, commentate the game so mm -hmm. tomorrow very very interesting day with uh, round eight, the next to last round of the tournament. Yes, uh, well, I expect uh, a highly interesting finish of the tournament. Yeah, mm. well, thank you very much once again, Ralph, for uh, being here with us. Okay, thank and you. And see you once again tomorrow. Thank you. Mm. Bye.